Hello and welcome guys. Make yourselves comfortable and enjoy. Well, now, this is Necromancer of the Shadows. Chapter 801. Damn, now I don't even have the power to lift a finger. But this place, Evan muttered in a tired voice as he slumped down to the ground. Once the rift was closed, after dropping to the ground, he looked around and saw the eldritch energy that came out of the rift had spread in an area of more than 500 kilometers. He was already out of both primordial shadow energy and the world essence, so it was impossible for him to stay in the place corrupted by the eldritch energy for a prolonged period of time. Moreover, during this entire time, his body was facing the pressure released by the eldritch creature. Earlier, he didn't feel anything because he was trying to think of a way to close the rift, but now that the rift was completely closed, he was finally feeling the after effects of facing such great pressure. Every single muscle in his body was screaming in pain, and his blood flow was completely unstable. I need to leave before this messed up eldritch energy damages my body even more, Evan said in a low voice, and looked at the deep red tentacle of the creature he had severed. The tentacle was around 20 meters long, and even though it was just a small body part of the eldritch creature, it was still releasing a chilling aura. This tentacle came from a creature who is probably a rank 5 existence, so it should be quite valuable, Evan said, and put away the tentacle inside his shadow storage. After putting away the tentacle, he stored away the bodies of the demons, including their storage rings, and looked at the place where the rift was. F.U. Asterisk King A.S.S. Asterisk Ole. That bastard gobbled down the mid-level rank 2 demon, who probably had quite a few things inside his storage ring. Evan swore with an annoyed look on his face, and sat down on the back of the wind and lightning sheep. Once Evan sat down, wind and lightning circled around the feet of the sheep, and it bolted away. Five hours later, Evan opened his eyes at the top of a mountain peak and took a deep breath. Removing that eldritch energy from my body was harder than I expected, he said in a low voice and looked at his shadow undeads who were guarding his surroundings. After confirming everything was in place, he opened his status window and looked at the notifications that he had received when Gobu opened the dimensional rift. Your shadow undead Gobu has activated the unique skill Eldritch Horror Dimensional Rift. The Eldritch Horror Dimensional Rift is being affected due to the influence of Path to Origin. Path to Origin Evan narrowed his eyes when he saw these words, and organized all the information he had in an instant. Because of the information that he received when he turned Gobu into a Shadow Undead, he knows that there are Eldritch Goblins inside the Tomb of the Ancient. The Eldritch Goblins came into existence due to the influence of the Eldritch Energy. Which means there is definitely a source of Eldritch energy inside the Tomb of the Ancient. Gobu's skill, Eldritch Horror Dimensional Rift, allows him to open a rift that connects with a plane that is filled with Eldritch creatures, and since the rift Gobu opened was influenced because of Path to Origin. Could it be this Path to Origin is somehow related to the source of the Eldritch energy that is present inside the Tomb of the Ancient? Evan asked himself with a deep frown on his face, and found it plausible. Just what the hell is this path to origin? And how is it connected with the world core whose existence I felt in the closed world of Drades? Evan rubbed his forehead and felt a deep headache just thinking about all of these things. Feeling his headache increasing just thinking about these things, he shook his head and stopped thinking. Forget it, instead of wasting my time on these things, I should focus on increasing my power. While I am still inside the tomb, Evan muttered and took out the soul lotus from his shadow storage. The silver-colored lotus was glowing with a faint light, and now that it was already plucked, it didn't release its spiritual power into the atmosphere when Evan took it out. After refining this, I should be able to push my spiritual power to the beginner level of rank 2, Evan said in an excited voice, thinking about how much his fierce skill would grow once he refined the soul lotus. The soul lotus was just a palm-sized flower, so Evan ate it in one go. The moment he chewed the lotus and swallowed it, a vast amount of spiritual energy exploded inside his body, rushing towards his soul. If it were any normal mid-level rank 1 core revolver, their body might have exploded due to the vast amount of spiritual energy. But Evan merely flinched in front of the tide of spiritual energy, and guided it towards his soul. 
A faint white layer of spiritual energy appeared around him as his soul started to absorb the energy like a black hole. The spiritual pressure around Evan started to increase at a rapid speed. Time continued to move, and after six hours, Evan's spiritual power reached the border of beginner level rank 2. Once his spiritual power reached the border of rank 2, he felt as if a wall was blocking his path. But under the surge of the soul lotus's spiritual energy, the wall shattered like glass, and Evan's spiritual power easily reached the beginner level of rank 2. Surprisingly, even after reaching rank 2, the power of the soul lotus didn't disappear, and continued to increase his spiritual energy even more. It took Evan two more hours to absorb the remaining power of the soul lotus. Once he absorbed the remaining power of the lotus, Evan finally opened his eyes as they glowed with the white light of spiritual energy. Now, if I use the fear skill, I should be able to influence a beginner level rank 2 core revolver even without using the shadow possession skill. Chapter 802 I need to educate that brat, Evan said as he looked at the dead bodies of the demons in front of him. Originally, other than Molich, his shadow undeads had killed all the demons. But during the fight, one of the wind and lightning sheep went a little overboard and blasted the body of one of the demons into smithereens, leaving nothing behind. Because the body of that demon was completely destroyed, Evan couldn't turn him into a shadow undead. Which is why he was a little displeased. He looked at the three remaining bodies of demons, and after considering for a moment, he turned Goliath into a shadow undead, gaining another beginner level rank 2 shadow undead. As for the two peak rank 1 demons, he just absorbed their souls using soul absorption to create a soul beacon. After turning Goliath into a shadow undead and absorbing the souls of the demons, Evan looked inside their storage rings. The wind and lightning sheep only destroyed the body of the peak rank 1 demon, without damaging his storage ring, so he had four storage rings. Upon looking inside the storage rings, the first thing Evan saw was the essence stones. The total number of essence stones that he found in the four rings was more than five million, which was not a small amount by any means. Seriously man, looting people is the best way if you want to become rich, Evan muttered with a stupid grin on his face and dumped all the essence stones inside his shadow storage. Other than the essence stones, he found many different kinds of high quality materials and herbs as well. Although he didn't care too much about the materials, he was quite delighted when he saw the herbs, as he could give them to Amara to make perfect use of them. Evan also found a mid-level rank 1 spear, and a low-level beginner level sword. He gave the spear to Elijah, and decided to keep the sword for himself, as the short sword that he found in the mountain range was destroyed earlier. This suddenly, Evan noticed something inside the storage ring of one of the peak rank 1 demons, and his eyes opened wide in shock. He used his metal force and took out a ruby red colored stone from the storage ring. Soul blood crystal Evan muttered in a voice full of shock, and took a deep breath. He looked at the soul blood crystal in his hand, and soon a wide grin appeared on his face. Now I finally have all the materials that I needed in order to evolve carnage into a rank 1 artifact. Evan wanted to immediately evolve Carnage, but he stopped himself and looked at the other things inside the storage rings first. After the Soul Blood Crystal, he didn't find anything useful in the storage rings. As he was about to put away the rings, he noticed something in the rings and took out four weird-looking small black glasses. The black glasses were rectangular in shape and looked like smartphones, Evan said with a weird look on his face as he looked at the four black glasses in his hand. The three black glasses that he took out from the storage rings of rank 1 demons looked normal, but the black glass that he took out from the rank 2 demons ring was flashing with red light as if indicating that he had a new message or a notification. Still feeling weird, Evan tried to use the black glass but failed miserably as he did not know what it was. Oi, what is this? Since he wasn't able to figure out what the black glass was, he simply decided to ask its owner. Hearing Evan, Goliath explained to him that the black glass was actually a device similar to a GPS. That could be used to talk to or send your location to other demons, if you encounter danger or anything else. So I just need to infuse my world essence inside it to use it, Evan asked once Goliath explained it to him. Yes, Goliath nodded his head hearing him, and Evan poured his world essence inside Goliath's device that was flashing with a red light. The moment Evan poured his world essence inside the device, it lit up like a screen, 
and showed a message with a marked location. Some people found an essence spring in the southeast range of the mountains, but it is surrounded by a powerful barrier. Many people are gathering there in order to destroy the barrier and use the essence spring. If you are interested, then come here quickly. Evan read the message and saw Goliath received it nearly one hour ago. He looked at the marked location and realized it would take him nearly one hour to reach there even if he went there using the wind and lightning sheet. An essence spring. Ha Evan muttered in a low voice, and after thinking for a moment decided to take a look at it. But before heading towards the marked location, he took out carnage from his shadow storage. Evolution requirements for carnage. For low level rank 1 evolution. 1. 1 kilogram Dracorium. 2. 200 grams of Eldrite. 3. 2 soul blood crystals. Directly support the authors on web novel. 4. 3 beginner level rank 1 monster calls. Evan looked at the materials he required for the evolution and took them out. Other than the soul blood crystals, he had already purchased everything from Star City. So he had all the other materials inside his shadow storage. After taking out the materials, he placed them in front of Carnage. The moment he placed the materials in front of Carnage, two notifications flashed before his eyes. Detected all the required evolutionary materials for Carnage. Do you want to evolve Carnage? Yes slash no. Evan looked at the notifications that appeared in front of him, and chose yes without hesitation. As Evan chose yes, a black aura flashed out from Carnage and all the materials that he had placed near it turned into liquid. Once the materials turned into liquid, they merged with Carnage, and another notification flashed before his eyes. Carnage is evolving into a low-level rank 1 artifact. Chapter 803 Whoosh! A sharp wind blade tore through the air, and cut down the body of an S-rank salamander into two halves. As the blood and internal organs of the salamander gushed out, a black sheep leapt into the air and passed above the dead salamander without stopping. Atop the black sheep, an average-looking man with grey hair was sitting. When the sheep leapt above the salamander, the man stretched out one of his fingers, and a small black hole formed at the tip of his finger, absorbing a multicolored orb that appeared above the salamander after its death. Crackle! With the sound of lightning crackling, the sheep landed hundreds of meters away from the dead salamander, and continued to move forward. We are almost there the grey-haired man who was actually Evan, said while looking at a small mountain in front of him. He was heading to the location of the essence spring that he saw in Goliath's device. Before going there, he changed his appearance, so that he wouldn't have to start a needless fight against the people who would try to catch him due to the bounty on his head. Although he wanted to spread the news about himself as he had a plan in mind, it was not the right time for that. According to the message he saw in Goliath's device, many people gathered near the essence spring to destroy the barrier covering it. If he started a fight against them, it would affect the plan he had in mind. Soon, the wind and lightning sheep reached the small mountain, and with a single leap it appeared at the top of it. Alright, stop. Once at the top of the mountain, Evan dismounted the sheep and summoned it back inside his shadow storage. After summoning back the sheep, he looked ahead and saw many people gathered a few hundred kilometers away from the bottom of the mountain. Hum, the number of people is higher than I expected. And I can even feel the auras of two peak rank 2 evolvers, Evan muttered in a low voice as he looked at the gathering of people. According to his estimation, there were nearly 30 people. This number was not small considering the tomb was quite big, and people were scattered to different locations. While looking at the gathered people, Evan suddenly noticed something and narrowed his eyes. So that is the essence spring. Huh, he said to himself as he noticed a small milky white pond, that looked like a hot spring. The pond was 50 meters in diameter, and was covered in a transparent golden barrier. Even from a distance of hundreds of kilometers, he could feel that the barrier was quite sturdy and difficult to deal with. Now I understand why they were calling more people here, Evan muttered, and finally realized Goliath received that message, because the people gathered here needed more manpower to break the barrier. At the same time, another question rose inside his mind. Why are these people not attacking the barrier? Goliath had received the message nearly two hours ago. So although Evan decided to come here, he had expected that the people might have already destroyed the barrier that surrounded the essence spring. But looking at the area around the spring, he could tell that people didn't try to attack the barrier even once. Just what are these people thinking? Evan muttered in a low voice and jumped down from the mountain. 
His body descended toward the ground at rapid speed. And just before he was about to hit the ground, green wind circled around his body, and he calmly landed on the ground. After landing, he moved towards the gathering of people. While moving towards the people, Evan noticed that all the people present there were in groups, except for one man. The person who was alone was one of the peak rank 2 core evolvers, whose presence he felt earlier. The man had two light purple horns on top of his head, short deep black hair, green eyes, and was wearing a light golden robe. His hands were covered in light purple scales, and Evan could tell that the man was definitely not a normal rank 2 core evolver. From his appearance, it seems he is a dragon Evan said inwardly, looking at Voitska, who was standing some distance away from the barrier, with an indifferent look on his face. As he walked further, the people standing near the barrier also noticed him, and their eyes turned strange upon seeing him. Evan wasn't surprised when people looked at him strangely, as he already expected this. Although there were some mid-level rank 1 core evolvers just like him, all of them were with companions, as it was quite dangerous for a mid-level rank 1 core evolver to move in the tomb alone. Moreover, there were many rank 2 evolvers present there, so it was quite strange for a mid-level rank 1 evolver to approach them, considering the fact that it wasn't uncommon for people to kill others in the tomb. On top of that, the way Evan was walking and his expression made it clear that he didn't care about the people gathered there and wasn't afraid of them. Now, whom should I ask why they are not attacking the barrier? Evan thought after stopping and glanced at the people who were still looking at him with strange eyes. Huh. We are still thinking about how to deal with the barrier. But there is already a beggar who came to watch the show and reap the benefits. As Evan was pondering about whom he should ask for information, he heard a voice and saw a black dash. Skinned guy with bulging muscles coming towards him. Seeing the appearance of the guy who was approaching him, Evan's eyes widened. Guess I really have a deep connection with these guys, Evan muttered in a low voice as another extreme demon stopped in front of him. Chapter 804 Evan had to lift his head a little to look at the face of the extreme demon who approached him as the demon was nearly two and a half meters tall. The demon's eyes were deep red, and he was looking at him with a menacing expression on his face. From the fluctuations of the aura around the demon, Evan could tell he had recently reached rank 2, probably one or two days ago, and was far weaker than Goliath, whom he turned into a shadow undead earlier. Do you need something? Evan asked in a lazy voice, not caring about the beginner level rank 2 pressure that the demon was releasing. He had changed his appearance into an average looking man with grey hair who had a lethargic expression. So when he spoke lazily, everyone present felt as if speaking was a chore to him, and didn't want to engage in conversation. Seeing that the mid-level rank 1 noob wasn't taking him seriously at all, the demon's black face turned dark. The people who were present there looked at the darkening face of the demon with an amused expression, barely holding back their laughter after seeing his reaction. Feeling the amused looks of the onlookers, the demon's eyes flashed with anger, and he pressed down his aura on Evan. You weak ass bar. Soul severance. Evan has never been a fan of meaningless conversations. So the moment he noticed the demon wanted to attack him, he used his spiritual skill. Soul severance. Soul severance. After activating this skill, the user can use their spiritual power to sever the connection between a person's body and soul for one second, rendering them unconscious or temporarily incapacitated. If it were before, it would have been pretty difficult for Evan to affect a beginner level rank 2 core evolver using soul severance. But now that his spiritual powers were also at the beginner level of rank 2, due to the soul lotus, it wasn't difficult for him to sever the connection between the soul and body of the demon for a second. The moment Evan used soul severance, he lost more than half of his spiritual energy. But as a result, the red eyes of the demon turned completely hollow, as if he had lost his soul. Once the connection between the demon's body and soul was severed, Evan's hand glowed with a light blue aura, and sonic vibrations started to come out of it. He bent down his body to gather his strength, and using the sonic resonance skill, delivered a powerful uppercut right at the demon's chin. Crack! The sound of bones cracking rang out throughout the surroundings, and the demon was sent flying high into the sky like a rocket. Blood sprayed out from the demon's mouth, and as he ascended to the sky, a strange black aura covered his body. When the black aura appeared around the demon, every single person present, including Voitska, 
felt a chill run down their spine. To their shock, before they could understand what was happening, the life force of the demon whom Evan sent high in the sky suddenly disappeared. Bang! With a loud bang, the heavy body of the demon dropped to the ground, creating a 10 meter wide and 2 meter deep crater. With eyes as wide as saucers, people looked at the dead body of the demon, unable to comprehend how he died with just a single punch. Evan looked at the dead body of the demon with the same lethargic face, as if he wasn't surprised at all, but inwardly, he was also as shocked as the other people. The instant death effect of your bloodline doom bringer has been triggered. F-U asterisk K-S-H asterisk T Sherlock Evan screamed inwardly, not believing that the instant death effect of his bloodline had triggered. It was the second time the instant death effect of his bloodline had activated, since he awakened his bloodline. The first instance occurred when he used the blood bullet along with Master of Shadows authority while fighting the essence clone of the demon in the Aurora world. After looking at the dead demon for a few seconds, Evan looked around and noticed most of the people were looking at him with horror-filled eyes. They didn't know about the instant death effect of his doom bring a bloodline, so they assumed the demon died, because his punch was too powerful. Extreme demons are known for their powerful physical bodies, so to kill a beginner level rank 2 extreme demon in a single punch, one has to be at least at the very top of mid-level rank 2 or even higher. After witnessing how Evan killed the demon with such ease and his carefree demeanor, only one thought came to people's minds. This lazy gray-haired bastard is using an artifact to hide his true rank. Observing the way people were looking at him, Evan could already guess what they were thinking, and he barely held back his laughter, although it was completely unexpected. It's not like I'm going to complain Evan said inwardly, and walked towards the dead demon. The people near the crater where the demon's dead body was lying, backed away upon seeing Evan approaching it. Evan stopped in front of the crater and, without showing any kind of expression, put away the body inside his storage ring. After securing the body, his gaze shifted towards the group of extreme demons standing nearby, and his eyes turned sinister. Among the group of extreme demons, there were five individuals, all of whom were rank 1. The demon Evan had just killed was the only rank 2 evolver among them. In reality, they were all waiting for Molich and Goliath to arrive. Unfortunately, despite sending the information about the Essence Spring to them nearly two hours ago, they haven't received any reply. I was wondering whom I should ask for information about what is going on here. But now there is no need to think about it anymore Evan said inwardly, and took a step forward instantly appearing behind a peak rank 1 demon, before the demon could react. Chapter 805 So, brother demon, why isn't anyone attacking the barrier? Evan inquired calmly, appearing behind one of the peak rank 1 extreme demons. Eek. The demon screamed like a little girl and jumped away when Evan suddenly appeared behind him. You you stay away from me. The demon shouted in a frightened voice, afraid that Evan would punch him to death as well. Evan smiled kindly when he saw the frightened look on the demon's face, and spoke in a low voice, as if he were coaxing a child. Now, now, little demon, you don't have to be afraid of me. I am not a beast here to eat you. Just tell me why no one is attacking the barrier, and I will leave you alone. The peak rank 1 demon gulped down his saliva when he saw Evan smile because he could feel that if he didn't speak, his fate would be the same as the earlier demon. This barrier has reflective properties. Before the demon could start explaining, Evan heard a female voice, and saw a woman in a fiery red dress walking towards him. The woman had shoulder-length black hair, deep blue eyes, and a star mark at the center of her forehead. The aura around her indicated that she was a peak rank 2 core evolver, the second person whose aura Evan had sensed along with Voitska earlier. Reflective properties. Evan raised an eyebrow when he heard the woman and looked at her with a questioning gaze. If we want to destroy the barrier, we will have to launch a powerful attack that can break it in a single strike. If our attack is not strong enough, the barrier will simply reflect it and remain undamaged. Blaze explained as she stopped some distance away from Evan. We are currently not attacking it because we are waiting for more people to come here, so that we can combine our power and break it in a single attack. A look of realization flashed on Evan's face hearing Blaze, and he nodded his head. So that's how it is, huh? If we want to break the barrier in a single attack, we still need at least two or three more beginner level rank 2 core revolvers, Blaze said with a smile on her face. We have already contacted a few people, and they should be here soon. 
What do you say? Do you want to join us? With your power, it will become even easier for us to break the barrier. Blaze also saw how Evan killed the beginner level rank 2 demon in just a single punch. And similar to others, she was also thinking that he was a mid-level rank 2 evolver who was hiding his rank, so that he could mess with low-level rankers. She had been here for more than 3 hours, and was already tired of waiting for other people. If Evan, who is a mid-level rank 2 evolver in her eyes joins them, then they will just have to wait for 2 or 3 more people, and they will have enough power to destroy the barrier. I will be able to improve the rank of my core by a good margin, using the essence spring. So there is no reason for me to decline Evan thought inwardly, and nodded his head. Sure, I also want to use the essence spring, so I will cooperate with you guys. Great hearing Evan, Blaze smiled brightly. I am Blaze Infinite, what's your name? Considering your power, you must be from a powerful faction, and shouldn't be some unknown figure. When Blaze asked about Evan, the ears of other people who were hearing them perked up as they also wanted to know about him. There weren't many people who could kill beginner level rank 2 extreme demon in just a single attack, so all of them were curious about Evan and wanted to know more about him. When Evan heard Blaze, he shook his head and said in a humble voice, You overestimated me miss. I am just a lone wanderer without a home who travels from one place to another. I don't belong to any faction. Lone Wanderer Blaze was surprised when she heard Evan, but she didn't doubt him, because if Evan belonged to a powerful faction, she would have already heard about him. Other people were also surprised when they heard his answer because they thought Evan was from a powerful faction. So that's why I never heard anything about you. Since you are a wanderer, you must be traveling from one place to another, Blaze said, and nodded her head. By the way, you still haven't told me your name. My name Evan's mind raced at the speed of light when he heard Blaze, and he started to think of a name for himself. Before coming here, he didn't expect someone would ask about his name, so he didn't think about it beforehand. Suddenly, a name came to his mind, and he said with a smug look on his face, My name is Dead Man, Blaze, Voitska, other people, is this guy messing with me? Blaze's mouth twitched uncontrollably, and she wanted to beat down Evan, who had a smug look on his lazy face. She took some deep breaths to calm down her nerves, and spoke after a moment. So your name is Dead Man, huh? Is there a reason why your name is so unique? Hearing Blaze's question, Evan looked at her lazily and asked in a plain voice, Is there a reason why your name is so normal? Blaze. She closed her mouth, deciding not to engage with Evan any longer. Other people should be here in half an hour at best. Once they come here, we will attack the barrier, she said to him and turned around to leave. She felt like if she talked to him any longer, she might just attack him. Seeing Blaze leave with an annoyed look on her face, Evan smoked inwardly and opened his mouth. Huh, I know you are jealous because you have such a simple name, but hey... There is no need to feel down or blame your parents, as the majority of people in the world have normal names. Blaze nearly fell to the ground when she heard Evan's lazy voice, and barely held herself back from going back and burning him to ashes. Evan watched Blaze leave, and felt it was quite enjoyable to mess with people, especially if they didn't know about your true identity. Once Blaze left, Evan waited with the other people. And just as she had said earlier, about half an hour later, a few more rank 2 core revolvers arrived there. Once they arrived, Blaze gathered everyone as it was time to attack the barrier. Chapter 806 Around 35 people stood in front of the transparent golden barrier covering the essence spring. Among the 30 people, 22 were rank 1 evolvers, while the rest were rank 2. Although most of you already know what we are going to do. Let me give you a quick explanation. So that no one makes a mistake, Blaze, who was standing in front of the group said, and took out a black colored saber from her storage ring. As you all know, the barrier has reflective properties, and will reflect all the attacks aimed at it, if we don't destroy it in one single attack. It is nearly impossible for us to time our attacks, so that they hit the barrier at the same time and spot. So, in order to destroy it in one go, we will use my saber. Blaze paused after saying this and continued after a moment. This saber is made from the bones of a three-headed black ogre, and can store a large amount of power inside it. We will use our world essence to charge it to its maximum limit and attack the barrier. This way, we won't have to worry about timing our attack. 
Hearing Blazer's explanation, Evan looked at the saber with a surprised look on his face. From the aura of the saber, I can tell that it is at least a peak rank 2 artifact. He thought inwardly and narrowed his eyes. She took out such a high level artifact without any fear. Isn't she afraid it will invite trouble for her? Since there are many people who will definitely try to snatch it from her. Evan looked at the people who were hearing Blazer's explanation, and was taken aback when he noticed no one other than him seemed to have thoughts about snatching that saber. I know she is a peak rank 2 core evolver, but aren't these guys just too timid? Evan scoffed at the people who were not showing any greed in front of such a good artifact, and shook his head in disappointment. After briefly explaining everything, Blaze went towards Voidskar and talked to him for a few minutes. Evan wanted to hear what they were talking about but they created a soundproof barrier around them, so he wasn't able to hear what they were saying. Huh. These two are definitely planning something Evan said to himself when he noticed the barrier they created to avoid getting heard and sneered inwardly. Alright everyone, let's start. After talking to Voitska, Blaze said as her black saber hovered in front of the barrier. Charge at using your world essence, and don't think about holding back, otherwise, we won't be able to break the barrier and the attack will be reflected back towards us. Blaze was the first person to start pouring her world essence inside the saber, followed by Voitska. Seeing both of the peak rank 2 core revolvers, already started to pour their world essence inside the saber, other people also made their move. Evan was also pouring his world essence inside the saber, and keeping an eye on both Blaze and Voitska, as he was still suspicious about them, because of the conversation they had earlier. As people poured their world essence inside the saber, the black saber started to glow with deep red light, and a destructive aura started to come out of it. There are more than 30 people who are pouring their world essence inside it. But I can feel that this saber is still far from reaching its limit. Evan was astonished when he felt the rising aura of the saber, and for a moment, the thought of sending the saber inside his shadow storage came into his mind. Forget it, although I have some confidence that I can escape after taking this saber. I should wait for another opportunity, he said after a moment and decided to focus on the essence spring for the time being. Of course, he wasn't pouring his world essence inside the saber seriously. Although he had his primordial shadow energy, he still wanted to keep some of his world essence, so that he would be able to keep himself safe in case something happened once the barrier broke. Obviously, he wasn't the only one who was doing this. In fact, all the people present there including Blaze and Voitska, were the same. I wonder if we will be able to break the barrier at this rate Evan couldn't help but think when he saw all the people were trying to preserve their world essence. While Evan was thinking about this matter, a strange attractive force suddenly came out of the saber. What the Evan was taken aback when he felt the attraction force because after the appearance of the force, the speed at which the saber was absorbing their world essence increased by a great margin. Moreover, I can't stop my world essence from flowing inside the saber, Evan muttered and looked at Blaze and Voidska with cold eyes. What is happening? This saber is sucking me dry. Stop, someone stop this saber or I will run out of fuel. Miss Blaze, stop your saber. I can't hold on any longer. Evan nearly fell to the ground when he heard the way people were expressing their shock. Although he knew what they were talking about, he still felt there was something wrong with the script. Don't worry everyone. I know you all are shocked, but I have no choice but to do this. Otherwise, we won't be able to break the barrier because of your half-baked efforts. Blaze said in a calm voice, as the saber continued to absorb the world essence of everyone other than Voitska and Blaze, like a black hole. Although the saber was not forcefully absorbing their world essence like other people, Blaze and Voitska were still pouring their world essence inside it, albeit not to the extent of other people who were being sucked dry by the saber. I know these bastards were planning to do something Evan scoffed, and his primordial monarch core slowly started to rotate. Using the power of his core, he forcefully severed the connection between the saber and himself. Other people also tried to sever their connection with the saber, but unfortunately, their core was not strong enough to resist the attraction force of the saber. The moment Evan severed his connection with the saber, the saber stopped absorbing his world essence, but as a result, the pressure on other people increased even more. Damn, why is it absorbing my world essence even more rapidly now? You fu asterisk king bird, do you want to kill us by forcefully absorbing all of our world essence? 
Blaze and Voidsko were taken aback when the attraction force of the Saber suddenly increased by another level. Although Blaze was controlling the Saber, she did not plan to absorb all the world essence of the people like this. She was planning to leave everyone with 10% of their world essence. But looking at the way the Saber was absorbing the world essence of the people, she didn't know what to say. There shouldn't have been any complication like this unless someone disturbed the flow of world s suddenly. Blaze thought about something and looked at the person who killed the beginner level rank 2 extreme demon with just a single punch. You when Blaze looked at Evan, she nearly coughed out blood due to anger and her eyes opened wide in shock. What the hell are you doing, dead man? She shouted in an anger filled voice, looking at Evan who was roasting a steak of meat over a fire while everyone else was pouring their world essence inside the saber. Voidska and the other people also looked at Evan, and were similarly taken aback when they saw him roasting meat, while they were being drained by the saber. Hearing Blaze, Evan looked at her with a confused look, and pointed at the steak that he was roasting. What do you mean, what am I doing? Can't you see, I am cooking meat because I am hungry. This bastard hearing Evan, Blaze was so angry that she wanted to attack him on the spot. But Evan didn't give a sh asterisk t about her, and said in a plain voice, Let me give you some advice, Miss Simple named the space behind Evan suddenly turned pitch black, and two deep red eyes opened in the darkness. If you try to play a trick on me once again, you will take the place of this meat steak on the fire. So in the future, you better inform me beforehand if you are planning to do something like this. Due to the fear skill, everyone, including Voidska and Blaze, felt a soul-shuddering coldness, and their bodies froze on the spot. Feeling the fear that seemed to be coming from deep within their souls, Blaze and Voidska were about to circulate their spiritual energies to resist the effect of the fear skill. However, before they could do so, Evan stopped using the fear skill. He knew that if Blaze and Voidska started to circulate their spiritual energies, they would be able to resist the fear skill's effect due to their high level spiritual power. He didn't want to make it clear that they could resist it using their spiritual powers, which is why he activated it only for a split second to intimidate them, and left the rest to their imagination. Actually, Evan wouldn't have done this, but his gut feeling was telling him that Voidscore and Blaze were still planning to do something with the Essence Spring and, if I want to know what they are planning to do, then I need to make it clear that I am not weaker than them. Chapter 807 BRZZZ the Saber released powerful energy fluctuations, making the space around it tremble. Blaze's forehead was covered in cold sweat, as she tried her best to control Saber's power. This should be enough, she said to herself after a moment, and the Saber suddenly stopped absorbing the world essence. The moment the Saber stopped absorbing the world essence of the people, all of them other than Blaze and Voitska, dropped to the ground with pale faces and weak auras. Evan had long since stopped pouring his world essence into the Saber, and was eating the steak he cooked, so he was completely fine. Go, after stopping the saber from absorbing the world essence, Blaze motioned with her hand, and the saber shot towards the transparent golden barrier like a bullet. Boom. With a loud sound, the saber struck the barrier, creating intense ripples on it. The moment the barrier was struck by the saber, a strange force gathered around it, trying to reflect back the saber towards Blaze and others. However, under the intense power of the saber, the repelling force was completely annihilated, and cracks started to appear on the barrier. Crack, crack. Soon, the barrier was covered in a spiderweb-like pattern, and the golden glow around it started to dissipate. Seeing the barrier was about to shatter, Evan ate the entire steak in a single motion and stood up. Most of the people were still feeling dizzy because of being sucked dry by the saber, so they just looked at the barrier without standing up from the ground. It's about time, Evan muttered in a low voice and... Crack. Cracked. The golden barrier shattered into countless light fragments, illuminating the surroundings in a golden hue for a moment. Whoosh. The moment the barrier shattered, a vast amount of world essence spread in the surroundings from the essence spring pond, rejuvenating all the people who were sucked dry by the saber. Blaze and Voidsko were in front of the group, and the moment the barrier shattered, they wanted to rush towards the pond. But before they could, they felt a cold wind blowing past them, and saw a grey-haired man with a lazy-looking face already soaking inside the spring. The faces of Blaze and Voidska turned dark when they saw this. But considering what happened earlier, they didn't do anything and entered the essence spring without making a fuss. 
When Evan entered the Essence Spring Pond, a cooling sensation washed over his body, and his core started to absorb the world essence from the spring on its own. While his core was absorbing the world essence from the pond, a black shadow left his body and dived deeper into the Essence Spring Pond. Let's see if I can find anything Evan muttered in a low voice. Once the black shadow left his body, and sat in one of the corners of the Essence Spring Pond. Because of the vast amount of world essence that came out of the Essence Spring Pond, most of the people recovered some of their world essence. That was sucked dry by the saber, and they also entered the pond. Because of the fear skill Evan used earlier, almost everyone was afraid of him. So no one dared to go near him even after entering the pond. Evan was very pleased when no one came near him, as he could absorb the world essence faster from the spring pond this way. He glanced in the direction of Voidskar and Blaze, and noticed they were once again talking about something, and had a soundproof barrier around them. Seeing the soundproof barrier, a smirk appeared on Evan's face, and he closed his eyes. Let's start he said to himself, and his primordial monarch core started to spin. As his core spun, the world essence from the essence spring pond rushed towards it. The pond was nearly 50 meters in diameter, and there were just 35 people. So even though the amount of world essence Evan was absorbing was completely abnormal, no one noticed it. What should we do with him? While absorbing the world essence, Evan suddenly heard Blaze's voice inside his head. Let's wait for a few hours. The energy of the essence spring will run out in a few hours as there are so many people here. Once the energy runs out and he leaves, we can look for it, Voidska said when he heard Blaze and glanced in Evan's direction, who had his eyes closed. Huh. If not for him, we wouldn't have to act like this, Blaze said with a frustrated look on her face and sighed loudly. Don't forget you were the one who asked him if he wanted to join us in breaking the barrier. I invited him because I thought he was just a mid-level rank 2 core evolver, and even if he tries to do something, it won't be difficult for us to handle him. But who would have thought that he would be such a strange person? Blaze said with a twitching mouth as she remembered his name. While speaking, she suddenly thought about something and asked Voidsko with a frown on her face. By the way, what will we do if we find only one evolution essence drop? In that case, I will take the evolution essence drop, and will give you something of equal value in return. I want a mid-level void crystal in return. Blaze immediately said upon hearing Voidska. Mid-level void crystal. Voidska raised an eyebrow when he heard Blaze. Are you planning to create a higher level artifact? Something like that. You should know void crystals are very rare, especially the mid and higher level ones. But Voidska said and nodded his head. Considering the value of the evolution essence drop, I think it is a fair trade. I don't have any mid-level void crystal on me for the time being. But I will give you one once we leave the tomb. Blaze was delighted when she heard Voidska and looked at the people who were absorbing the world essence from the essence spring. It's good that no one can go to the bottom of the essence spring, due to the chaotic world essence deep inside it. Otherwise, they would have found out about the evolution essence drop as well. It wouldn't have mattered even if they found out because they don't have the ability to take it away from us. The only reason I am not going down for now is because of how delicate the evolution drop is. And I don't want anyone to ruin it because of their foolishness, Voidska said while looking at everyone, keeping an eye on all the people who entered the essence spring. Because of the high concentration of the world essence, it was difficult for evolvers to look inside the essence spring pond using their spiritual senses. So Blaze and Voidska had no choice but to keep monitoring the people using their eyes so that no one would go deep inside the pond. Although it was nearly impossible for rank 2 core evolvers to reach the bottom of the pond due to the chaotic world essence deep inside it, they still had to keep an eye on everyone just in case. What is this evolution essence drop they are talking about? Evan muttered to himself as he heard the entire conversation between Blaze and Voidska using his skill Shadow Mark. Shadow Mark. Using this skill, you can put a mark on your target's shadow. Using this mark, you can track the location of the targeted person, and can even hear their conversation if they are not far away from you. Earlier, when he entered the Essence Spring, he sneakily used the Shadow Mark skill on Blaze, as he knew they were planning to do something. Evan didn't know what is this Evolution Essence drop they were talking about, but judging from the way Blaze and Voidsko were talking, he could tell that it was definitely something precious. Well, from their conversation, I can tell that this so-called evolution essence drop is inside the pond, 
and since that's the case, Evan said inwardly, a small smile appearing on his face, as he thought about what he had done after entering the pond. The essence spring pond was filled with a rich amount of world essence, and Evan's primordial shadow core was absorbing it like a black hole. This essence spring is even better than the essence stone mines for increasing the rank of my core, Evan said, as he felt how fast his core was absorbing the world essence. While absorbing the world essence, he suddenly thought about what he had done in the essence stone mine, and his eyes lit up. His hands, which were inside the water of the essence spring, glowed, and thorn-filled vines came out of them. Energy devouring using energy devouring, he increased his absorption speed even more. While absorbing the world essence, Evan suddenly felt something, and a smile appeared on his face. Did he find something he muttered in a low voice, and used the shadow senses skill. Chapter 808 While absorbing the world essence from the essence spring, Evan felt something and used shadow senses to connect his vision with Aqua, whom he had released inside the essence spring pond earlier. The essence spring pond was a few thousand meters deep, and the deeper one goes the more chaotic the world essence inside it becomes. The chaotic world essence deep inside the pond was harmful to the core evolvers, as their bodies and cores couldn't handle the impurities inside it. Evan knew about the chaotic nature of the world essence that was deep inside the pond even before he sent Aqua inside it. But he wasn't worried about him, because, unlike normal core evolvers, Aqua was a shadow undead and he could heal him using his world essence, even if his body were to get damaged by the chaotic energies of the pond. Upon connecting his vision with Aqua using shadow senses, Evan saw that Aqua was already quite deep inside the pond, and the world essence around him was muddy brown in color instead of its usual blue. So this is the unrefined chaotic world essence that will slowly get purified and replenish the world essence of the essence spring pond. That we are absorbing, Evan said to himself, as he looked at the muddy world essence around Aqua. After observing the unrefined world essence for a bit, he inspected Aqua's body, and noticed that it was filled with cracks due to the vast amount of unrefined world essence inside the pond. Moreover, Aqua was still far from reaching the bottom of the pond. So that's why he contacted me even though he is still far from reaching the bottom of the pond, Evan muttered in a low voice, and used his world essence to heal Aqua's body. As Evan healed him, the cracks on Aqua's body started to disappear, and he once again dived deeper into the pond. Because Evan was constantly healing him, Aqua's diving speed was very fast, as he did not have to worry about his body getting destroyed by the chaotic world essence. This pond is really quite deep Evan thought to himself, when even after diving 5000 meters, Aqua didn't reach the bottom of the pond. The amount of chaotic world essence in the deeper area of the pond was even higher, and even though Evan was constantly healing him, small cracks started to appear on Aqua's body. A few minutes later Evan suddenly noticed something and his eyes lit up. Finally he said inside in relief as he noticed the bottom of the pond. Upon reaching the bottom of the pond Evan saw that the chaotic world essence was coming out from the small cracks. And the concentration of the chaotic world essence was at least two times higher at the bottom compared to other areas. Unlike the surface of the pond which was 50 meters in diameter the bottom of the pond was much larger in area. Even though I am constantly healing him, Aqua can stay here for 15 minutes at best, Evan muttered, looking at the cracks that were appearing on Aqua's body, despite the fact that he was healing him without stopping. Aqua, search every nook and cranny of the pond as fast as possible, and see if you can find this so-called evolution essence drop, Evan ordered Aqua using his shadow senses, and Aqua started to search everywhere inside the pond. While Aqua was searching at the bottom of the pond, the amount of the refined world essence that was at the surface of the essence spring was constantly depleting as all the evolvers who entered the pond were absorbing it to the best of their abilities. Other than the power of his core, Evan was even using energy devouring to increase the speed at which he was absorbing the world essence. Because of this, his core had already reached the 45% mark of mid-level rank 1 and it was still increasing at a rapid speed. From the way things are progressing, I think this essence spring will run out of steam in about half an hour, Evan said, looking at the pond. Hum suddenly, he received a signal from Aqua, 
and immediately used the shadow senses once again. Did you find something? Evan asked after connecting his vision with Aqua. Hearing Evan, Aqua pointed towards a small crack that was present at the bottom of the pond. Evan looked at the crack Aqua was pointing at, and noticed something shining inside it like a diamond. What's that? He muttered with a frown on his face and told Aqua to take it out. Aqua complied with Evan's order and dug out the shining thing from the crack. Once Aqua dug it out, Evan saw that it was a small palm-sized stone that was shining with dark blue light. It looks like an essence stone, Evan muttered in a low voice as he looked at the stone through Aqua's eyes. Although the stone looked like an essence stone, Evan was sure that it was definitely something else, as even the peak level essence stones couldn't be compared with the stone that Aqua found. Put it away Aqua, and continue your search, Evan decided to look at the stone once Aqua came out of the pond, and asked him to continue to look for the evolution essence drop, that Blaze and Voidsko were talking about. Aqua continued his search, and in just five minutes, he found two more shining stones at the bottom of the pond. Similar to before, he put away the stones in his storage ring, and kept looking for the evolution essence drop. Evan was also absorbing the world essence to the best of his ability, and because of his high absorption speed, his core reached the 50% mark of the mid-level rank 1. Even after reaching the 50% mark, he didn't stop and continued to absorb more world essence. While absorbing the essence, he suddenly received a message from Aqua. Upon receiving Aqua's message, he stopped absorbing the world essence and used shadow senses. The moment Evan's vision connected with Aqua, he noticed something in front of him, and a weird look appeared on his face. Chapter 809 Is this a seashell? Evan raised an eyebrow when he saw the thing in front of him, and asked Aqua to check it out. Aqua quickly came in front of the one meter wide seashell, and tried to open it. But to Evan's surprise, Aqua wasn't able to open the seashell even after using his full strength. What the hell is this seashell? Evan muttered in a dumbfounded voice as he did not expect Aqua wouldn't be able to open the normal looking seashell, even though he was a mid-level rank 1 monster. This seashell is definitely not normal, Evan said to himself, and asked Aqua to put away the shell inside his storage ring, and bring it to him. But to his shock, when Aqua tried to put the seashell inside the ring, he realized he couldn't put it inside the ring. Since he can't put the seashell inside the ring then does it mean it is alive? Evan muttered in a baffled voice because he couldn't feel any life aura coming out from the seashell. Aqua even tried to lift the seashell and bring it out without putting it inside the ring. But it was also useless because the seashell didn't even budge from the ground. Just what the hell is this thing Evan scratched the back of his head, not knowing what he should do. The cracks on Aqua's body were getting bigger and bigger, and it was obvious that he wouldn't be able to survive there for a long time, even though Evan was constantly healing him. Suddenly, a thought came into Evan's mind, and he sent another message to Aqua. Pour your world essence inside the seashell and try to open it again. Receiving Evan's message, Aqua quickly poured his world essence inside the seashell. When Aqua started to pour his world essence inside the shell, Evan noticed it was absorbing Aqua's world essence at a rapid speed. As Aqua continued to pour his world essence into the shell, the shell started to shake, and after a few seconds, whoosh, the seashell suddenly opened, releasing a large amount of white steam. That was instantly swept away by the chaotic world essence of the pond. Evan didn't care about the steam that the seashell released, as his eyes were fixed on a small blue-colored water drop inside the shell, shining like a blue ruby. Is this the evolution essence drop they were talking about? Evan muttered in a voice filled with excitement, and immediately ordered Aqua to put away the drop. Although he ordered Aqua to quickly put away the drop, he still remembered Voitska saying that the evolution essence drop is very delicate, and would be ruined if not handled properly. So, before putting away the drop inside the storage ring, he told Aqua to collect it inside a potion bottle, that could preserve liquids. Aqua followed Evan's order, and collected the shining blue drop inside an empty potion bottle. Only after collecting the drop inside the bottle did he put it away inside the storage ring. Alright Aqua, quickly come back. Once Aqua collected the Evolution Essence drop, Evan immediately ordered him to return, as his body was reaching its limit. If Aqua stayed inside the pond any longer and accidentally died, Evan would have to send someone else deep inside the pond to collect his storage ring, which is holding the Evolution Essence drop, 
and the shining crystal that he found earlier. Aqua was about to swim towards the surface of the pond when he received Evan's order, but before he could rumble, the bottom of the pond started to shake. Evan was still using shadow senses, so he immediately noticed the abnormality, and a bad premonition filled his heart. Aqua, quickly run. He shouted using shadow senses, and Aqua immediately started to swim towards him. Rumble crack. The rumbling at the bottom of the pond intensified, and cracks started to appear at the bottom. Through the cracks, a large amount of chaotic world essence came out, filling the bottom with muddy brown colored essence. Amidst the chaos, two deep yellow eyes opened and... Whoosh! A powerful aura swept outward blowing away the chaotic world essence, and revealing the figure of a nearly 5 meter dash. Long starfish. Through Aqua, Evan felt the aura of the starfish, and his face turned pale. Why is there a rank 3 monster in the third layer of the tomb? Evan cursed loudly and quickly created his shadow clone, sending it towards Aqua, who was swimming towards him. The aura of the rank 3 starfish was just too powerful, so other people inside the essence spring pond obviously noticed it as well. Damn it. I could have still improved the rank of my core by a few percent, but there is no way I am going to stay here now, Evan said loudly looking at the people who were panicking without understanding what was happening. Although they felt the powerful aura of the rank 3 monster, they were still confused because they couldn't sense anything inside the pond using their spiritual senses. Run away if you don't want to die. There is a rank 3 monster inside the pond, and it is coming towards us, Evan warned the panicking people, and instantly left the essence spring pond. When people heard Evan, their faces turned pale, as most of them knew they would definitely die in front of a rank 3 monster. Woo oh. Suddenly, they heard a strange sound, and the water of the essence spring pond started to ripple. At the same time, a powerful aura engulfed the surroundings, turning the faces of the people pale white. Unlike the other people who panicked after feeling the aura of the rank 3 monster, Blaze and Voidsko were not afraid. However, the look on their faces was quite ugly, as both of them knew what was going on. Someone took the evolution essence drop and awakened the Guardian, Voidsko said in a voice filled with anger, and looked towards Evan, because, in his eyes, he was the only one who could do something like this. When Evan felt Voidsko's cold gaze on him, he looked at him and waved his hand with a smug smile on his face. At the same time, a silver light flashed around him and he disappeared from there. Boom. The moment Evan disappeared, the water of the pond was blasted away, and the rank 3 starfish appeared above its surface. Chapter 810. A few seconds before Evan disappeared using the soul beacon skill, Aqua was swimming towards the surface of the pond trying to get away from the starfish. But because of the heavy aura of the rank 3 monster, his speed was not very fast. Despite controlling the water of the essence spring using his skill to swim upwards as fast as possible, the rank 3 starfish was closing in on him at a rapid pace. Not only that, because of the aura of the rank 3 starfish, the chaotic world essence that was in the deeper areas was blown towards the surface, and Aqua was caught inside it. The cracks on his body were increasing at a speed visible to the naked eye, and his body was reaching its limits. Woo oh. Suddenly, a strange sound echoed from behind him, and when Aqua glanced behind, he saw the starfish approaching him with its maw wide open. The mouth of the starfish was filled with thousands of small, razor-sharp teeth, and a bloodthirsty aura was emanating from its body. Noticing the starfish was about to catch him, Aqua controlled the water of the essence spring pond, and shot hundreds of water bullets towards it. Unfortunately, the difference in their power was just too great, and the starfish simply swallowed all the water bullets that Aqua shot towards it without even batting an eye. Damn it, is there a toilet inside this guy's stomach? All of my water bullets disappeared inside his mouth, as if he flushed them somewhere. Aqua cursed when he saw his attacks were useless, and the starfish was about to swallow him as well. He tried to swim towards the surface even faster, but the difference in their speed was just too great. And before he could reach the surface, the starfish appeared behind him with its maw wide open and swallowed him in one go. Damn Aqua tried to resist the suction force of the starfish's maw, but under the powerful aura of the rank 3 monster, he was completely overwhelmed and disappeared inside its mouth. After swallowing Aqua, the starfish was about to close its wide open mouth, but just before it could, a streak of black light tore through the water and entered its mouth. The starfish was taken aback when something entered its mouth, 
but it did not care too much about it, because the only fate that awaited those who entered its mouth was certain death. Since it was already awake, the starfish aimed to eliminate every person who dared enter the Essence Spring Pond, so it started moving towards the surface. But before the starfish could breach the surface of the pond, it sensed that the presence of the hippo it had flushed inside its stomach earlier disappeared. Surprised by the sudden disappearance of the hippo, the starfish halted its ascent. Inside the starfish's stomach, which was strangely larger than its external size, Evan's shadow clone sighed in relief after safely storing a quire in his shadow storage, and his body disintegrated into black smoke. When the starfish felt even the aura of the second person who had entered its stomach disappear, an angry expression crossed its face. Although it did not know what had happened, it was certain that the hippo whom it had flushed earlier had somehow escaped. Woo-o! The starfish let out an angry roar, and with a single motion burst out onto the surface of the pond, sending the essence spring's water flying. Meanwhile, about 15,000 kilometers away from the Essence Spring Pond, a silver white light flashed, and Evan appeared. His face was pale white, and his breathing was rough as teleporting such a distance under the pressure of a rank 3 monster used up a large amount of his world essence. Boom. The moment Evan appeared there, he heard a loud explosion from the distance, and powerful energy waves swept outwards in all directions. From the distance, he watched as the small mountain that he had seen earlier was blown into dust and disappeared from the face of the earth because of the fight that broke out at the Essence Spring Pond. Because he was around 15,000 kilometers away, Evan couldn't see the fight that broke out even after using the Hawk's Eye skill. Although he could not see the fight, he was sure that other than Voidsker and Blaze, other people wouldn't be able to survive against the starfish if they decided to stay there instead of fleeing. Most of the people present in the Essence Spring were just rank 1 core revolvers, and it was impossible for them to face a rank 3 monster even though the starfish was only at the beginner level of rank 3. Should I go there and take a look? Evan muttered with a pondering look on his face. But after a moment, he shook his head and turned around to leave. Those two people are definitely far stronger than any peak rank 2 evolver I have ever seen. So it will be troublesome if I go there and they catch me, Evan said to himself, thinking about Voidsker and Blaze, and summoned a beginner level rank 2 wind and lightning sheep. He sat down on the back of the sheep and ordered it to move away from there. Roar. Screech. As the wind and lightning sheep started moving, Evan heard a loud dragon roar and a phoenix cry. He looked behind from the back of the sheep, and even though he was quite far away, he still noticed a faint image of hundreds of meters long dark purple western dragon, covered in deep purple energy, and a giant firebird surrounded in blazing orange flames. As I thought, that guy is a dragon, and the miss simple name is a phoenix, Evan muttered in a low voice, and his lips curved upwards slightly. I wonder what kind of faces they will make when we meet next time, he said, and the wind and lightning sheep bolted away from there, leaving behind a trail of purple lightning. Chapter 811 H-U-F-F asterisk H-U-F-F asterisk Voidsker and Blaze panted a little as they looked at the dead body of the starfish, floating above the water of the Essence Spring Pond. Around the dead starfish, a few more people lay lifeless. They were the ones who couldn't escape in time and were killed by the starfish. That bastard ran away, Voitska said in a voice filled with fury, as he searched for Evan using his spiritual senses, but couldn't find him. It took Blaze and him nearly 20 minutes to kill the starfish. Although they could have done it faster, they didn't use their trump cards or other powerful skills, because they were planning to venture into the first layer of the tomb, which was filled with many mid and peak rank 3 monsters. Both of them wanted to preserve their best skills and authorities, which is why it took them more than 20 minutes to kill the starfish, even though they were working together. After confirming that Evan had really escaped, Voidsker dove into the Essence Spring Pond. His body flashed with deep purple void energy, and all the chaotic world essence that tried to approach him was swallowed by it. Under the protection of the void energy, Voidsker reached the bottom of the pond in less than a minute, and searched everywhere. Blaze waited for him outside, and collected the storage rings of the people who died because they couldn't escape from the starfish. Boom. After a minute, the water of the Essence Spring Pond was blown away by an immense force, and Voidsker emerged with an angry expression. Damn you, dead man. I will rip off your head next time I see you. His void energy became chaotic as he shouted loudly, 
Blaze sighed when she saw this and shook her head. To think he would snatch the evolution essence drop from under our noses. Blaze muttered in a low voice and rubbed her forehead. Damn, it was such a good chance for me to get my hands on a mid-level void crystal. But that lazy bastard ruined it. Blaze glanced at Voidska, who was still screaming like a madman, and silently started to walk away from the scene. They had only been working together because of the evolution essence drop. But now that it was stolen by a third party, there was no reason for her to stay with him. Considering his powers, he will definitely go to the first layer of the tomb. Blaze muttered as her eyes flashed with flames. Let's see if he still acts like a lazy bastard when I meet him again. Perfect level essence stone. An essence stone filled with the purest world essence. Using this stone during a breakthrough increases the chances of a successful breakthrough. There is also a small possibility that after refining the perfect essence stone, the potential of your core will increase by one minor level. Evan examined the details of the shining stone Aqua had found at the bottom of the pond, and a surprised expression crossed his face. Honestly, he didn't care much about how the perfect level essence stone could assist him during a breakthrough. Given the solid foundation of his primordial monarch core, making breakthroughs was relatively easy for him. However, he was quite interested in the second effect of the perfect level essence stone. There are billions of people in this world who can't progress further due to the limited potential of their cores, and they would pay any price for this stone. Just to have a small chance of increasing their potential by one minor level, Evan said with gleaming eyes, as he stored all three perfect level essence stones found by Aqua in his shadow storage. Thinking about the perfect level essence stones, Evan suddenly remembered the fire domain stone. That was still evolving inside the evolution space of the Rune of Evolution, due to the fourth effect of the growth link skill and he opened his status window. F parenthesis chap, 704. Time remaining before the fire domain stone evolves into a perfect level fire domain stone. 25 days, 3 hours and 4 minutes. 25 days? Huh? Evan muttered in a low voice and nodded his head. I think it will evolve right on time. After confirming the status of the fire domain stone, he took out the potion bottle in which Aqua had placed the evolution essence drop. He opened the cork of the bottle, and the details of the Evolution Essence Drop appeared in front of his eyes. Evolution Essence Drop. A rare treasure that can evolve one of the user's skill or authority upon consumption. The higher the level of the skill or authority, the more drops of the Evolution Essence they require to evolve. Evan read the details of the Evolution Essence Drop, and his eyes opened wide in shock. This thing can evolve one of my skills or authority. He muttered in a shocked voice, taking deep breaths to calm down his fast-beating heart. After reading the details of the Essence Evolution Drop, there was no hesitation in his mind, as the thing that he wanted to evolve, immediately came into his mind. There is no way I am going to use it to evolve a skill when it can evolve an authority he muttered, thinking about which authority he should evolve, using the Evolution Essence Drop. He had two authorities. One was Death Guardian, while the other was Master of Shadows. Both of these authorities were out of this world, and were his main trump cards against a powerful opponent, so it wasn't easy for him to choose one authority among them. After considering everything for a long time, Evan finally reached a decision and made up his mind. Here goes nothing he said and drank the single drop of the evolution essence he had in one go. The moment he drank the drop, a strange power coursed through his body, and a notification flashed before his eyes. Choose the skill or authority that you want to evolve. Chapter 812. Choose the skill or authority that you want to evolve. In front of Evan's eyes, the names of all his skills and authorities appeared. He looked at them for a second, and, after considering everything, he chose to evolve the Death Guardian authority. The reason he chose Death Guardian instead of Master of Shadows was because of the short duration of the Death Guardian authority. Although the Death Guardian authority was very powerful, its duration was just 5 seconds, and he was hoping he would be able to use it for a longer period of time after evolving it. The moment Evan chose Death Guardian for evolution, the energy of the evolution essence drop inside his body started to move. He felt the energy moving inside his body, and waited for his authority to evolve with a look of anticipation on his face. The energy of the evolution essence drop moved towards his primordial monarch core, and was absorbed by it. But not even a second later, his core released the energy of the evolution essence drop back into his body, and a notification flashed before his eyes. 
Evan quickly read the notification that appeared in front of him, and his expression immediately turned ugly. Damn it he cursed in a low voice, looking at the notification in front of him. You need 60 drops of evolution essence to evolve the Death Guardian Authority. Although he had already read the information about the essence evolution drop, and knew that the higher the level of the skill or authority, the more drops of evolution essence he would need to evolve it. He still hoped that he would be able to evolve his Death Guardian authority with it. He wasn't expecting any kind of high-end evolution, and just wanted to increase the duration of the authority. So he really thought it wouldn't be a problem to increase it using one drop, but... 60 drops? How the hell am I supposed to find 60 drops? Evan muttered in a speechless voice, not knowing how he should react. Getting one drop of evolution essence liquid can already be considered a rare thing. But he needed 60 to evolve the Death Guardian Authority. I don't think I would be able to find 60 drops even if I searched all over the tomb. He said in a dejected voice and fell deep into thought. After thinking about everything for a moment, he tried to evolve Master of Shadows. But, you need 80 drops of evolution essence to evolve the Master of Shadows Authority. Evan. He took some deep breaths to calm down and finally regained his composure after a minute. Actually, considering the powers of both of my authorities, I should have already expected this. He said with a sigh, and laughed at his own stupidity. Both of his authorities were far stronger than normal authorities. So it was painfully obvious that they would require more evolution essence drops to evolve. But he naively thought that one drop would be able to evolve his authority to some extent. Guess, I can only choose to evolve a skill now. He said with a shake of his head and looked at the list of his skills. He first tried to see if he could evolve the Shadow Resurrection skill, but the result was quite obvious. Shadow Resurrection skill can't be evolved. I was hoping to evolve it so that I can create even higher level Shadow Undead without increasing the rank of my core. But I guess it is impossible, Evan said with a sigh and looked at other skills. You need 20 drops of Evolution Essence to evolve Shadow Save. Racial skills can't be evolved using the Evolution Essence drop. You need 3 drops of Evolution Essence to evolve Wind Manipulation skill. He tried to evolve his other unique skills, such as Temporal Velocity, Abyssal Vortex, and others, but the required Essence Evolution liquid for them was also too high. This this Evolution Essence is completely useless, Evan said with a speechless look on his face as he wasn't able to evolve any of his skills that he wanted to evolve. He looked through all of his skills once again, and after a minute his eyes fell on a skill that he uses a lot. It's just a normal skill so I should be able to evolve it, right? He muttered in an uncertain voice and chose the skill. The energy of the evolution essence liquid was once again absorbed by his primordial monarch core. He clenched his fist and hoped that his core wouldn't reject the energy this time, and his skill would successfully evolve. Just as Evan was praying for the success, some notifications flashed before his eyes. Sonic Resonance can be evolved to the next stage. Do you want to proceed with the evolution? Yes slash no. Evan read the notifications, and finally a relieved smile appeared on his face. If this evolution essence couldn't even evolve this normal skill, I would have seriously doubted that this sh asterisk t is just a scan. He said to himself and chose yes. The moment Evan chose yes, his core started to spin. At the same time, his world essence started to decrease at a rapid speed. In just a few seconds, he lost more than 40 points of his world essence. Evan's core continued to spin, and finally stopped absorbing his world essence after a few minutes. Just as Evan was thinking the evolution of Sonic Resonance was over, some notifications once again flashed before his eyes. Choose an evolution path for the Sonic Resonance skill. 1. Fist skill. 2. Sound element skill. What the quote Evan was completely taken aback when he saw the new notifications as he did not expect something like this. Fist skill or the sound element skill. He muttered in a low voice and fell deep into thought. Using the sonic resonance skill, Evan can instantly gather his strength in his fist, and at the same time, use the sonic vibrations to deal devastating damage to his opponents. But the meaning of the notifications that he just received was pretty obvious. In order to evolve the skill, I will have to either give up on the sound vibrations, or on the ability to instantly gather my strength in fists, Evan muttered with a conflicted look on his face, as he did not want to lose any of these abilities. 
The sound vibrations of the sonic resonance skill were quite useful, as even if he lacked in strength, he could still damage the internal organs of his opponents using this skill. However, if he chose to evolve sonic resonance into a sound dash type skill, he would lose the ability to instantly gather his strength and deal a critical strike without any effort. He thought about everything for a long time, and in the end finally chose to go with the fist type skill. There were two reasons why Evan made this choice. First, fist type skills were rare and not easy to acquire, unlike sound type skills that he could obtain by absorbing the cores of monsters specialized in the sound element. Second, even if he couldn't acquire a sound type skill by absorbing cores, it wasn't a problem as he had shadow undeads of sound wyverns and sonic bats who could use sound type skills. He could just take their skills using the second effect of the growth link skill. Once Evan made up his mind, he did not hesitate any longer and immediately chose the first option. Sonic resonance is evolving. The moment Evan chose the fist skill, a strange energy emanated from his primordial monarch core. He felt as if an electric current passed through his body, and all the energy that came out of his core was absorbed by his body. The strange sensation lasted for a few minutes, and Evan's body finally absorbed all the energy that came out of his core. The moment he absorbed all the energy, some notifications flashed before his eyes. Your strength stat is permanently increased by 10 points. Sonic Resonance has evolved into unique skill, Skyfall. When Evan saw the first notification and realized his strength was permanently increased by 10 points, he was taken aback. However, he immediately stopped thinking about this when he saw the second notification and found out that Sonic Resonance had actually evolved into a unique skill. Without wasting any time, he immediately opened his status window and looked at the details of Skyfall. Skyfall, unique skill, upon activation increases the user's strength stat in accordance with the amount of world essence consumed. For every two points of world essence, it increases the user's strength stat by one point. The higher the user increases his strength using Skyfall, the higher the burden it will put on their body. If the body of the user is not strong enough to handle the increased strength, there is a very high chance they will receive serious injuries, or their body might even explode. Chapter 813 Evan hovered high in the sky using the shadow wings, and took a deep breath, while looking at a 200 meters tall mountain below him. Suddenly, the two black wings on his back disappeared, and he started to fall towards the mountain. While falling down, a deep golden halo covered his body. Skyfall, he said in a low voice, and immediately lost 90 points of world essence. Although he lost 90 points of world essence and felt a little dizzy, his strength stat increased by 45 points. After the evolution of Sonic Resonance, his strength stat was permanently increased by 10, reaching the 95 point mark. And now that he used Skyfall and increased his strength by another 45 points, his current strength stat was at 140 points, comparable to normal beginner level rank 2 core evolvers. Damn, it's fu asterisk king painful Evan gritted his teeth while falling down, as he felt his muscles tearing apart, due to the burden of Skyfall. Even though it was quite painful, Evan didn't lose focus and looked at the mountain below him, because due to his falling speed, he was about to crash into the mountain. But just as he was about to crash into the mountain, a powerful aura burst outwards from his body, and punched downwards. Break! He shouted in a loud voice, and a world-shattering force emerged from his hand. Evan's tiny fist came into contact with the mountaintop, and for a moment everything turned silent as if time stopped flowing. But the silence didn't last long because the next second, boom, a doomsday-like explosion reverberated in the surroundings. With earth-shattering power, the punch destroyed the mountain's peak, sending shockwaves reverberating through its core. The impact was so immense that it tore the mountain asunder, disintegrating rock and soil into a chaotic maelstrom. The force of the punch created shockwaves that radiated outward in all directions, demolishing everything in their path. Trees were uprooted and flung like mere twigs. Boulders hurled through the air with deadly force, and the ground itself heaved and fractured under the tremendous strain. The surrounding landscape transformed into a scene of apocalyptic chaos. A thick cloud of dust and debris rose high in the sky, obscuring the once clear sky, and casting an eerie pall over the desolation below. The impact of the shockwave lasted for a few seconds, before a gust of wind blew away the dust cloud rising high in the sky, revealing the center of the impact area. When the dust cloud dissipated, 
The 200 meter tall mountain that used to be there, disappeared from the face of the earth. In its place, there was now a crater more than 100 kilometers wide, and nearly 300 meters deep. In the middle of the giant crater, Evan lay on the ground with tattered clothes. His body was bleeding from all over, and some of his bones were snapped. F.U. K. Evan cursed while lying in the middle of the crater, trying his best to stop bleeding. Other than his completely limp hand, his body was not overly injured. But he had many minor injuries, making it hard for him to stand up. Death Transfer Feeling the condition of his body, Evan used the death transfer skill and immediately returned to perfect condition. Holy sh asterisk t, I didn't expect the burden of increasing my strength by 45 points, would be so high, Evan said, while taking a few deep breaths and stood up from the ground. He looked at the destruction caused by Skyfall, and seeing the result of his attack, a small smile appeared on his face. With the help of Skyfall, my physical attacks can also reach the beginner level of rank 2, he said in a voice filled with satisfaction as he did not expect his physical attacks to reach the rank 2 mark so soon. His spiritual attacks had already reached the rank 2 mark because of the Soul Lotus. So now that his physical attacks were also at rank 2, he could finally give a decent fight to beginner level rank 2 evolvers, without using Shadow Possession. This tomb is really filled with extraordinary treasures, Evan said with a shake of his head, and took out the map of the mountain range from his Shadow Storage. Team Black had already completed the map of the mountain range, and Evan was now planning to gather everything he could, before heading towards the second layer of the tomb. He looked at the map of the mountain range created by Team Black, and after confirming his destination, summoned the shadow undead of a wind and lightning sheep. After summoning the sheep, he sat down on its back and disappeared from there in an instant. Three days later, with this done, I can finally head towards the second layer, Evan said in a light voice, as he plucked a peak rank 2 herb, that could be used to create rank 2 healing potions. He placed the herb inside his shadow storage, along with the body of a dead mid-level rank 2 monster, and stood up from the ground. In the last three days, he collected all the things that he could in the mountain range. Naturally, there were many things marked on the map but some of them were already collected by the people who entered the mountain range. Although Evan felt disappointed when some things were collected by other people, he couldn't do anything about it, other than collecting the things in the mountain range. He also showed his face to many people, spreading the news about him to even more people. He had already returned to his original appearance after leaving the Essence Spring Pond, so when he flashed his face in front of people, they immediately recognized him as the person who stole the Enlightenment Stone from the Blood Moon Auction House. Now, let's head to the second layer, Evan said after putting away the herb, and was about to move away. When the crystal that Cedar had given him before he had entered the tomb, started to vibrate. Chapter 814 Damn it, Carla cursed as she wiped away the small trickle of blood coming from the corner of her mouth. Carla the beginner level ranked 2 Drade who entered the tomb with Evan and Cedar. The area around her was littered with blood, broken limbs, and flesh. Hundreds of vines releasing faint green smoke slithered around her like snakes, giving the scene a horrifying appearance. UBI asterisk CH, just you wait. Once my friend comes over, I will chop off your limbs and use you like livestock. A man with black hair, pale white skin, and blood red eyes said in a voice filled with hatred as he struggled to expel the poison invading his body. Carla paid no attention to the vampire's threats, and focused on stabilizing her injuries. Her body was covered in wounds, and her aura was chaotic. Observing Carla's indifference, the vampire glanced around at the blood-soaked surroundings. A look of deep fear briefly crossed his face as he recalled the events that had transpired earlier. Similar to Carla, the vampire confronting her was a beginner level rank 2 vampire named Blake. He and his group were on their way to the second layer of the tomb when they encountered her. Seeing that Carla was alone, Blake's group wanted to rob her. There were five people in his group, including Blake himself and another beginner level rank 2 core revolver. The other three were rank 1 core revolvers, and all of them were also quite strong. They thought it wouldn't be difficult to rob Carla who was alone but they never expected her to be far stronger than them. The battle lasted nearly an hour, during which Carla killed all four vampires in Blake's group, except for Blake himself. Blake was also seriously injured and even poisoned by her. The problem arose because Carla had almost exhausted her world essence and stamina after the long fight, 
leaving her without enough strength to kill Blake despite his injuries. Similar to color, Blake was also depleted of world essence, and was trying to overcome the poison, so he lacked the strength to kill her. Although poisoned, Blake's condition was still better than Carla's, who was on the verge of collapse due to exhaustion after the prolonged battle. She knew her situation wasn't good and wanted to escape, but Blake didn't give her any chance to flee. As a vampire, the blood-soaked area was a perfect playground for him, making it easy for him to prevent Carla from running away. Although Carla had infused the poison into all the blood littering the area, making it hard for Blake to control it, he still managed to stop Carla from escaping, who was completely exhausted. My friend is a mid-level rank 2 core revolver. You will be dead meat once he arrives, Blake said in a tone filled with hatred as he thought about how thoroughly Carla had beaten him despite both of them being beginner level rank 2 core revolvers. Carla did not show any reaction upon hearing Blake's words. But inwardly, her mind raced as she thought about a way to escape. She knew that in her current condition, she would definitely die if she fought a mid-level rank 2 core revolver. I already sent a signal, but I don't know if anyone will come here. Carla thought inwardly with a bitter look on her face, cursing her own stupidity. When Blake and the others attempted to rob her, threatening to use her as livestock, she lost her temper and engaged in the fight, without considering the consequences. Considering her powers, if she had chosen to escape instead of fighting, it wouldn't have been difficult for her to get away from there. However, she impulsively joined the fight without thinking things through. I should have fled as soon as I saw I was vastly outnumbered Carla sighed internally and took a deep breath. The poison vines around her began to shake and the smoke emanating from them intensified. Realizing that dwelling on past events wouldn't change anything, she decided to use the last of her world essence, in hopes of escaping, rather than waiting for a mid-level rank 2 vampire to confront her. Blake's expression changed upon seeing the poison emitting from the vines. For a moment, fear flashed across his face as he struggled to overcome the poison already inside his body. It would be extremely dangerous for him if more poison entered his system. Poison mist. Carla said in a low voice, instantly covering an area of more than 10 km in dark green poisonous gas. With her world essence running low, using another skill made her face instantly pale, and her head began to spin. Although her head started to spin due to exhausting all of her world essence, she gritted her teeth and started to run away from there. The poison gas skill Carla used wasn't ordinary as it could even block people's spiritual senses. Knowing that Blake wouldn't risk entering the poison mist in his weakened state, she saw it as her best chance to escape. Unfortunately, even before she could cross the area covered by the poison gas, a heavy aura enveloped the surroundings. Carla was already very weak, so as soon as the heavy aura enveloped the area, she coughed up blood and collapsed to the ground. A powerful energy wave surged outward and blew away the poison gas covering the area. Once the poison gas cleared, Carla saw Blake standing alongside a two-meter-tall vampire with red hair, who had a smug look on his face. It was obvious that the second vampire was a mid-level rank 2 core revolver. Carla's expression turned grim, and she gritted her teeth in frustration when she saw this. UBIT asterisk H, I told you, you will be a dead meat onk Blake spoke in a smug voice, but before he could finish his threat, bang. A booming sound, like that of a bullet firing, echoed from hundreds of kilometers away. Carla was stunned when she heard the loud sound, and before she could comprehend what had happened. Ugh. She heard the painful screams of Blake and the mid-level rank 2 vampire, and saw their bodies were burning in deep orange flames. Chapter 815. Did she encounter a peak rank 2 core revolver? Evan muttered as he moved while looking at the small crystal in his hands. In the closed world of Drades, he had sparred against Kala and other Drades who entered the tomb with him, so he knew that she was quite strong, and could even safely escape from mid-level rank 2 core revolvers. But now that he was receiving a distress signal from her, the only reason that he could think of was that she might have encountered a peak rank 2 core revolver, and was unable to escape from there. I hope she can hold until I arrive there, otherwise Evan said with a shake of his head, and urged the wind and lightning sheep to move even faster. Other than Cedar, his relationship with other Dryads could only be said to be that of an acquaintance. Even in the closed world, he met Kala and others only two or three times, and even then, it was only for a few minutes. 
He honestly didn't care too much about them. But one of the conditions Sylvan had asked of him before allowing him to enter the tomb with other dryads was to assist Kala and others if they faced any danger inside. Moreover, he knew that if anything happened to Kala or other dreads inside the tomb, it would undoubtedly affect Cedar as well. Considering that guy's personality, he will definitely blame himself if something happened to other dreads in the tomb, Evan said with a sigh and looked at the crystal once again. According to the crystal in his hand, he was still quite far away from Kala's location, and it would still take him around 15 to 20 minutes to reach there, even with the help of the wind and lightning sheet. Around 15 minutes later, Evan was just 1,000 kilometers away from the location indicated on the crystal. Using the hawk's eye skill, he noticed a green cloud of poison covering a small patch of land in the distance. Since Evan had spied against Kala in the past, he knew she could use poison-related skills, and immediately understood the poison mist must have been created by her. Stop. Suddenly, Evan ordered the wind and lightning sheep to stop, and it halted at the top of a mountain. He dismounted the sheep and noticed that he was still nearly 500 kilometers away from Kala's location. If there is really a peak rank 2 core revolver, it is not a good idea to rush in there blindly, Evan said to himself, and extended one of his hands forward. The moment he extended his hand, his shadow started to shake, and a black rifle shot out from his shadow storage. Evan caught carnage that came out of his shadow storage, and lay down on top of the mountain, while aiming towards the poison cloud. Just like before, carnage was still black in color, with a hint of red all around its frame. The deadly aura around it was as strong as ever, and there didn't seem to be anything new about it other than the fact that the dangerous aura around Carnage was at least two times stronger than before. Carnage, low level rank 1. Carnage is a sinister work of art. Its star or frame enhanced with Eldrite and Dracorium. The sole purpose of creating Carnage was to kill its target. While wielding Carnage you can use Focus, Strengthening, Zephyr Precision, Phantom Shot, Blood Bullet and Elemental B-U-L-L-E-T new skills. The wielder of Carnage can switch between rapid fire and single shot mode at will. Focus. Focus skill keeps the user's mind calm and improves his eyesight by 50 times. Strengthening. You can use World Essence to improve the power of Carnage Marksman's bullets. Zephyr Precision. The Carnage rifle's shots can be adjusted mid-flight, allowing the user to change the trajectory of their bullets to hit targets from unexpected angles. Phantom Shot. Shots fired from the Carnage can phase through obstacles, allowing you to take down enemies who think they are safe behind cover. Can only be used 5 times a day. Blood Bullet. Use 10% of your blood essence to create a bullet that can destroy 50% blood essence of the target upon coming into contact with their body. If your blood essence has the power of a bloodline within it, the blood bullet will carry the power of that bloodline. You can enhance the effect of the bloodline that the blood bullet will carry with it by sacrificing more of your blood essence while creating the blood bullet. The blood bullet is ineffective against people who are three or more levels above you. Elemental Bullet. Using your world essence, you can create special bullets that carry the destructive power of the elements. Currently available elements that you can use to create bullets. Fire and Ice. Evan glanced at Carnage's details for a moment, and seeing the last skill, a wide smile appeared on his face. I evolved Carnage because for a long time, I needed a skill that would allow me to create bullets using my world essence. And I finally got what I wanted, Evan said in a voice filled with satisfaction, as he used the focus skill of Carnage. He was still using the Hawk's Eye skill, so when he used the focus skill, his eyesight increased by another 50 times, and everything that was happening at the distance became extremely clear in his eyes. Even though the poison mist was around 500 kilometers away from him, Evan felt as if it was just in front of him. Through the combination of focus and Hawk's Eye skill, he immediately noticed Blake, who was panicking after seeing the poison mist. Just a beginner level rank 2 core revolver, Evan raised an eyebrow when he saw there was just a single vampire, and couldn't understand why Kala sent a distress signal, because considering her powers, it shouldn't have been difficult for her to handle him. But his confusion didn't last long because he soon saw a 2 dash. Meet a tall mid-level rank 2 vampire, suddenly appear beside Blake. After appearing there, the mid-level rank 2 vampire immediately blew away the poison cloud using his powers. When the poison cloud was blown away, 
And Evan saw the bloody scene that was hidden inside the poison mist. He finally understood what happened. So she was outnumbered and ran out of steam. After killing most of them, Evan muttered in a low voice, and a faint smile appeared on his face. The number of people each faction of Utopia could send inside the Tomb of the Ancients was limited, so all the people who entered the tomb were elites of the factions and were stronger than normal core evolvers. After seeing the blood that stained the surroundings around Kala, he could easily tell that she had at least killed three people before he came here. Facing vampires while being outnumbered was already a feat in itself. But not only did she hold against them, she even killed most of them. I would have been seriously disappointed if she had sent a distress signal just because of a single vampire. But now things are completely different, he said in a low voice, and carnage started to glow with a faint orange light. Vampires were weak against the fire element, so he obviously chose to create a fire element bullet using carnage's new skill. Evan had 100 points of world essence and he started to pour them inside the rifle without reservation. As he poured his world essence inside the rifle, the faint orange light around Carnage started to intensify. Orange sparks crackled in front of Carnage's muzzle under 5 dash. Centimeter long bullet releasing intense heat started to materialize there. Evan started to sweat buckets due to the intense heat, but he ignored it and continued to pour more world essence inside the rifle. In just a few seconds, he poured 80% of his world essence inside Carnage, leaving him with only 20 points of world essence. He was feeling a little dizzy due to using most of his world essence, but he shook his head and tried to focus. Once he stopped feeling dizzy, he took a deep breath, and his lips arched upwards in a wide smile. Now, it's time to try the real thing, Evan said as he looked at the mid-level rank 2 vampire. Chapter 816 Evan knew that it was simply impossible for him to kill a beginner level and mid-level rank 2 vampire simply by using a fire bullet that was made just by using 80 points of his world essence. But he wasn't concerned about it because there was a reason why Evan wanted to evolve Carnage and hoped to receive a skill that would allow him to create bullets using his world essence. Sacrifice 500,000 souls to increase the power of the bullet, Evan muttered, and immediately lost 500,000 souls from his soul collection. The moment he sacrificed 500,000 souls, the orange fire bullet turned deep red in color, and its temperature reached a completely different level. The ground around Evan started to melt into molten lava, and plants instantly turned into ashes. At the same time, Carnage's frame started to shake violently, as if it would blow away at any moment, and it became extremely difficult for Evan to handle it. He had to use all of his spiritual power to handle the fire bullet, otherwise, it would have shot out of Carnage on its own. When Evan was in the Aurora world, he had an A-rank artifact called Moonlit Bow. Moonlit Bow, a rank, a bow carved from ancient moonwood infused with lunar magic. When an arrow is drawn and released from the bow, it glows with soft silvery light, granting it enhanced accuracy and the ability to pierce through magical barriers. In the light of the moon, the bow's power is further amplified, and its arrows can channel moonlight to heal or weaken its target at the will of its owner. Using this bow, he could create arrows by using his mana. During one of his fights, he created an arrow using the bow and increased its power using the soul absorption skill. Chap 492 at that time, because of the increase in power, it became quite difficult for him to control that arrow, and just after firing it, the Moonlit Bow was completely destroyed because of the pressure that the Soul Absorption skill placed on it. In a way, it was similar to what happens to Evan's body, each time he uses the Soul Absorption skill to increase his powers. At that time, Evan realized that even if he got a new artifact similar to the Moonlit Bow, that he could use along with the Soul Absorption skill, he would be able to use it only once, and it would be destroyed after that, because of the pressure that the soul absorption skill places on the artifacts. But not long after this incident, he connected Carnage with his growth link skill, and found out that due to connecting Carnage to his growth link skill, it became an indestructible artifact. Evan was quite shocked when he saw Carnage become an indestructible artifact, and a thought suddenly came into his mind. Since it's indestructible, doesn't it mean it won't be destroyed even if I use the soul absorption skill on it? When Evan realized this crucial thing, he was very excited, but then he encountered another problem. Through Carnage, he couldn't create bullets using his mana, 
and could only fire normal bullets. Using the soul absorption skill, he couldn't increase the power of bullets that were not created using his mana. So even though Carnage was an indestructible artifact, he couldn't use it alongside the soul absorption skill. Although Evan was sad after finding out about this problem, he was not overly disappointed because he thought that once he evolved Carnage, he might receive a skill that would allow him to create bullets using his mana. Unfortunately, when he evolved Carnage into a pseudo S rank artifact, he didn't receive the skill that he wanted. Although he did not receive the skill that he wanted, he was still quite happy because the blood bullet skill that he received at that time was also incredible. After a few months, when he evolved Carnage into S rank artifacts along with Boots of Voyager, he once again didn't receive the skill that he wanted, and the only thing that changed about Carnage at that time, was that its previous skills were strengthened a bit. But when Evan evolved Carnage into a rank 1 artifact a few days ago, he finally received the skill that he wanted. In fact, it was even better than the skill he wanted, because using the elemental bullet skill, not only could he create bullets using his world essence, but he could even give them properties of fire or ice element. Moreover, the best thing about Carnage is that he can control its bullets more easily compared to other artifacts, even after increasing their power, using the soul absorption skill, due to its skill, Zephyr Precision, which allows him to control bullets' trajectory, even after firing them. F.U. Asterisk K. It's harder than I thought, Evan said as he squeezed out all of his spiritual and physical power, to keep Carnage in its place, which was shaking crazily. The temperature of the fire bullet rose to a completely different level due to soul absorption, and it even started to burn his skin. Evan felt a massive headache because of using all of his spiritual power to keep the fire bullet in its place. But even then, he did not lose focus, and looked at Blake and the mid-level rank 2 vampire, who was standing some distance away from Carla. Temporal velocity. The headache Evan was feeling reached the next level, and blood vessels started to bulge out in his eyes, when he used Temporal Velocity, while controlling Overloaded Carnage. But because of using Temporal Velocity, everything in his eyes slowed down. In slow motion, he watched as Blake opened his mouth and started to speak something to Carla. Once he confirmed his aim was perfect, Evan put his finger on Carnage's trigger, and his eyes flashed with fury. Let's burn some bitches, baby. He said in a low voice and pressed the trigger. The fire bullet was already desperate to leave the Carnage. So the moment Evan pressed the trigger, bang, a loud booming sound echoed in thousands of kilometers of the area as the recoil tore apart the blood vessels in Evan's arms, causing him to slide backwards like a rag doll. Even while sliding backwards, he didn't lose focus and maintained his eyes on the bullet. Due to the amount of souls that Evan sacrificed to overcharge the fire bullet, its speed exceeded that of light, and it instantly pierced Blake's head the moment he pressed the trigger. After piercing Blake's head, the fire bullet lost nearly 30% of its power, and exited from the backside of his head. Evan was still using temporal velocity, so the moment he saw the bullet coming out from the backside of Blake's forehead, he used the Zephyr Precision skill. The moment he used the Zephyr Precision skill, the bullet suddenly made a solid U-turn, after emerging from the back of Blake's forehead, and pierced the head of the mid-level rank 2 vampire, who was standing beside Blake. As soon as the fire bullet entered the mid-level rank 2 vampire's head, Evan stopped controlling it through his spiritual power, causing the bullet to burst into deep orange flames. From the formation of the bullet to the piercing of the heads of the vampires, everything occurred in just a few seconds, leaving everyone, including the vampires themselves, bewildered. The power of the overcharged fire bullet was so strong that even before the vampires could use their power to resist the flame, their bodies turned to ash and they disappeared from the face of the world. Chapter 817 F U Asterisk King Hell Evan muttered as he lay on the ground without moving. The muscles of both of his hands were torn apart, and blood was oozing out of them without stopping. His face was completely pale white, and he was out of both world essence and spiritual energy. Slowly, he looked sideways and saw Carnage lying some distance away from him. Smoke was coming out of its muzzle. But despite shooting an overloaded bullet that could even destroy a normal peak rank 1 artifact, there wasn't even a scratch on it due to the indestructible effect of the growth link skill. He lifted his head a little to look ahead and found, due to the recoil, he had slid nearly 500 meters backwards. Elijah Evan called Elijah and looked towards the sky with a pondering look on his face. 
Hearing Evan, Elijah came out of his shadow storage and started to heal him without him saying anything. The power of the bullet was higher than I expected. He said to himself as he thought about how both of the vampires turned into ash the moment they were hit by the fire bullet. But when Evan thought about how the vampires were weak against the fire element, he found it natural that both of the vampires were not able to face the power of the bullet that was overcharged by 500,000 souls. Under Elijah's healing, Evan's torn muscles started to heal, and he slowly started to recover his world essence and spiritual energy. I think overcharging the bullet with 500,000 souls is my current limit. If I try to go beyond that, I don't think I would be able to control it with my current powers, Evan said after a moment and sat down. Earlier, he realized that it was very difficult for him to control the fire bullet that was overcharged by 500,000 souls. Even though his current spiritual power is comparable to that of a normal rank 2 core revolver, he still ran out of it, just because he had to control the fire bullet. If he had used more than 500,000 souls to overcharge the bullet, he was sure that he wouldn't have been able to control it using his current spiritual power, and the bullet would have shot out of carnage on its own in a random direction. Luckily, I didn't use 1 million souls to overcharge the bullet, otherwise Evan said with a sigh, and noticed Elijah had healed both of his arms, and was now healing the rest of his injuries, that he received due to the recoil of firing the bullet. While she was healing him, Evan suddenly felt something and looked ahead of him. When he looked ahead, he saw Carla coming in his direction. He wasn't surprised when he saw her, as anyone would have noticed his location, because of the loud sound that Carnage made when he fired the bullet. Moreover, Carla was a rank 2 core revolver, so finding him, who wasn't hiding his location, was quite easy for her. Are you alright? Carla soon stopped some distance away from him, and immediately asked upon seeing his blood-soaked body. After Blake and the mid-level rank 2 vampire turned into ash, she used her spiritual senses to look for the person who killed them, and found Evan lying on the ground. She was honestly quite shocked when she saw him, and found out it was Evan who killed the vampires, because although she knew he was strong, she did not expect him to kill even a mid-level rank 2 vampire despite being a mid-level rank 1 core revolver. I am fine it's just a little backlash because of using too much of my power, Evan said when he heard Carl and stood up from the ground. Under Elijah's strong healing, all the injuries of his body had already recovered, and he just had to recover his world essence and spiritual energy, to return to his peak condition. Carla sighed in relief when she heard he was fine and bowed to him. Thank you for helping me. If not for you, I would have been in serious trouble. She said in a sincere voice. Don't worry about it. It was just a small problem, Evan said in a light voice, and picked up Carnage from the ground. Carla was speechless when she heard Evan and received emotional damage when he said it was just a small problem. They were beginner level and mid-level rank 2 vampires for God's sake. Even I don't have enough confidence facing a mid and beginner level rank 2 vampire at the same time. But this guy is saying it was just a small problem Carla screamed inwardly feeling her mind going blank for a moment. Evan didn't care about Carla's shocked expression, and, after confirming Carnage was really not damaged, he put it back inside his shadow storage. Are you heading towards the second layer? He asked after putting away Carnage. Yes. Carla nodded her head, hearing Evan. Evan looked at the crystal that could track the locations of other dryads, and could also be used as a communication tool, and noticed other than Carla. He couldn't see anyone else's location in it. Since I can't see their location, it means the distance between us is more than 5 million kilometers, Evan said inwardly, and shook his head. In the outside world, these communication devices could easily be used even if people were hundreds of millions of distances away from each other. But in the Tomb of the Ancient, the range of these devices was limited. After seeing what happened with Carla, he was thinking about sending some of his rank 2 shadow undead to protect the other three dryads, who were just rank 1 core revolvers. But since he can't track their locations using the crystal, it was impossible for him to send his shadow undeads. Well, considering their ranks, they will most likely stay in the third layer, and they shouldn't encounter any danger. As long as they stay cautious, Evan said inwardly, and put away the crystal. The moment Evan put away the crystal, he received a message from Team Black, and his expressions changed for a moment, but they returned to normal in an instant, as if nothing had happened. Well, since you are out of danger, 
I will be going, Evan said and turned around to leave. Wait, seeing Evan was leaving, Carla stopped him and threw four storage rings towards him. These are the storage rings of the vampires that I killed before you came here. The storage rings of the vampires you killed were destroyed by the fire. So Carla said with a shake of her head, and didn't continue. She was a little disappointed thinking about the rings that were destroyed by the fire, especially the ring of the mid-level rank 2 vampire. Evan caught the rings that Carla threw towards him, and put them away with a nod of his head. He had no reason to reject the freebies. After putting away the rings, he seemed to think about something and asked, Do you need a ride to go to the second layer? Huh? Carla was taken aback when she heard Evan's question and looked at him in confusion. Seeing Carla's confusion, Evan summoned a wind and lightning sheep and said in a light voice, If you want, you can take it with you. Although it might not be as fast as you, you can save your energy if you travel using it. Carla looked at the wind and lightning sheep, and after thinking for a moment, she accepted Evan's offer without rejecting it. She already knew that Evan had more than five wind and lightning sheep, so she knew that it wouldn't affect him even if he gave her one shadow undead. Seeing Carla accept the wind and lightning sheep, Evan smiled and turned around to leave. If you encounter danger, don't hesitate to use the sheep as bait to get away. I can easily summon it once again even if it gets destroyed, Evan advised before disappearing. Well, it's definitely a broken summoning skill if he can summon them back even after they get destroyed, Carla muttered with a blank look on her face when she heard Evan and sat down at the back of the sheep. After sitting down, she pointed in the direction of the second layer, and the wind and lightning sheep bolted away from there. From a distance, Evan watched Carla moving towards the second layer with a thoughtful look. An unusual gathering of people. Ha huh, Evan muttered, thinking about the news that he received from Team Black earlier. It seems something interesting is going on in the second layer. He muttered with a small smile on his face, and summoned another wind and lightning sheep. After summoning the sheep, he sat down on its back and ordered it to head towards the location that he received from the Team Black. Chapter 818 Wind and lightning circled around the body of a black sheep as it moved towards the second layer of the tomb at rapid speed. Evan sat atop the sheep and looked at a bizarre-looking mushroom in his hand. The mushroom in his hand was white with hundreds of dark purple dots on it, releasing green smoke. This thing doesn't look edible at all, Evan said to himself as he examined the mushroom. If he was still on Earth, he was sure that he wouldn't even touch a mushroom full of purple dots, let alone one releasing green smoke. But because of the information window in front of him, Evan knew that the seemingly poisonous thing in his hand was quite precious. Enigma Mushroom A fungus filled with Enigma energy. Upon consumption, the user's sensitivity towards world essence would be greatly increased for the next 24 hours, allowing them to absorb the world essence at a faster rate. He found the Enigma Mushroom inside one of the storage rings that Carla gave him. There were many other things inside the rings. But the only thing that he could use was the Enigma Mushroom. Evan glanced at the details of the mushroom and took a deep breath. Calm down. Calm down even if this thing is poisonous. I still have mid-level poison resistance. So I won't die probably. He said in a low voice and finally tossed the mushroom into his mouth. As he chewed the mushroom and its taste exploded inside his mouth, Evan's face turned pale white and he wanted to throw up. However, thinking about the effect of the mushroom, he resisted the urge and swallowed it. Yak, Evan made a disgusted face after swallowing the mushroom and drank a large mouthful of water. Its taste was even more bizarre than its look and name, he said, and tried to feel the changes around him. Surprisingly, when he tried to feel the world essence, he noticed he could sense it more clearly. Moreover, the world essence from the surrounding area was rushing towards him, as if attracted by something. Noticing that the Enigma Mushroom was working, Evan willed it, and his call started to absorb the world essence from the surroundings. The speed at which his call was absorbing the world essence was at least ten times higher than normal, which made him smile widely. In the Essence Spring, his call had reached the 50% mark of the mid-level rank 1. Similar to what happened when his call reached the 50% mark of the beginner level rank 1, the amount of world essence he now needed to advance increased greatly. After reaching the 50% mark of mid-level, the effect of the Enigma Mushroom would last for one day, and Evan also needed to travel for around one day to reach the second layer. So he continued to absorb the world essence while the sheep moved towards the second layer. 
Around 23 hours later, Evan was finally able to see the outline of the second layer of the tomb. So, that's the second layer. Huh, he muttered, looking at the dark sky in the far distance. It looks creepy. Inside the tomb of the ancient, there was no concept of day and night. In the third layer of the tomb, the sky always stays light blue in color, with occasional floating clouds and a shining sun. But unlike the third layer, the sky of the second layer was completely dark. There was nothing in the sky, no star, no moon, no clouds, nothing. The sky was just covered in a dark, gloomy aura that gave people an eerie feeling. The wind and lightning sheet continued to move forward, and after some time, they finally entered the second layer of the tomb. The moment the sheep entered the second layer of the tomb, Evan felt the gravity around him change and increase by at least three times. He raised an eyebrow when he felt the sudden change in gravity, and ordered the wind and lightning sheep to stop. Hearing Evan's order, the wind and lightning sheep stopped. Evan dismounted the sheep once it stopped and lightly stomped on the ground to check something out. After stomping on the ground a few times, Evan nodded his head with a look of understanding on his face. As expected, he said and suddenly punched down the ground without holding back. Boom. A loud booming sound echoed out, and hundreds of meters of the area of the surroundings shook. Cracks started to spread out on the ground in a spiderweb-like pattern, and soon covered an area of 500 meters. When Evan saw the result of his punch, he sighed and shook his head. If I had punched down the ground in the third layer like this, I would have easily destroyed a few kilometers of the area without any problem. But in here, my punch couldn't even affect one kilometer of the area, he said as he looked at the dark, gloomy area around him. It was not that Evan had gotten weaker after entering the second layer. The reason he wasn't able to do much damage was that the second layer was much more durable than the third layer. Moreover, because of the sudden change in gravity, it was not easy for him to extract his full power without getting used to the high gravity. Realizing the second layer was quite different from the third layer, Evan didn't immediately rush deeper into the second layer. Instead, he did some light exercises and stretching to get used to the gravity so that he would be able to use his full power without any problem, if he encountered any danger. Just like that, one hour passed by, and the effect of the Enigma Mushroom ended. 56%, how Evan muttered in a low voice, examining the progress of his core, once the effect of the Enigma Mushroom wore off. After examining his core, Evan was about to move towards the location he received from the Team Black yesterday as he had already gotten used to the new gravity in the last hour. However, before he could proceed, he received another message from Team Black, and his expression changed. Chapter 819 In a certain dark, gloomy, desolate area of the second layer of the Tomb of the Ancient, hundreds of people were gathered in the same place. The atmosphere around the people was quite tense, and all of them were looking at the entrance of a cave in front of them. The entrance of the cave was 10 meters wide and 5 meters tall, emitting a strange pressure strong enough to make anyone below rank 1 kneel on the ground. From time to time, the cave entrance flashed with red, green, purple, and various other lights as if someone had turned on a disco ball inside it. The pressure coming out of the cave was peculiar. It wasn't strong enough to deeply affect rank 1 and other core revolvers, but for some reason, it covered a wide range of area. Even from 100,000 kilometers away, people could feel the pressure that the cave was releasing, which is why so many people had found the cave and gathered there. What do you think? Asked a handsome silver-haired elf standing just a few meters away from the cave entrance. Hum, I think your guess about the cave is right, replied a bulky man, around 4 meters tall, wearing full body plate armor made of golden colored material. The voice of the bulky man was very heavy and even the air around him trembled a bit when he spoke. Walter, the silver-haired elf and the leader of the group of elves, smiled a little when he heard the tall, bulky man, and his eyes gleaming with interest. What do you say? Do you want to enter the cave together? Walter asked after gazing at the cave for a moment. Momen, the tall man who was actually a giant, fell deep into thought upon hearing Walter. Giants were also a powerful species of utopia and the ruler of the giants was also a world-level expert. However, unlike other top factions, the population of giants was very low. Due to their low fertility rate, the number of giants in the world didn't exceed 5,000. So even though all giants were quite powerful, they were still not on the same level as the top factions of Utopia. 
After considering Walter's offer for a bit, Momin looked at the two giants standing behind him, and eventually nodded his head. All right, let's explore it together. It would be easy to avoid danger with more people around apostrophe, he thought as he walked towards the two giants. Walter also went to talk to the elves who were with him, and explained that they were going to enter the cave with Momin and the other giants. There were five elves in Walter's group, excluding himself, and no one objected when they heard him. Other than the fact that Walter was the strongest among them, they also knew that giants were quite powerful and wouldn't hinder their progress. Momin was at the peak of rank 2 while the two giants with him were both beginner level rank 2 core evolvers. Considering the powers of giants, they knew that even a normal mid-level rank 2 core evolver wouldn't be able to do anything against a beginner level rank 2 giant. Obviously, there were many other groups of people besides the giants and elves, but no one entered the cave until now, because they were all afraid of the unknown. Just the fact that the strange pressure coming out of the cave could affect an area over 100,000 kilometers, was proof that whatever was inside the cave was not something normal. Other than Momin and Walter, there weren't any other peak rank 2 core revolvers. The other groups only had one mid-level or beginner level rank 2 core revolver, while the rest were rank 1 core revolvers. Entering inside the cave, which was definitely not normal was very dangerous for them. So most of the people were waiting for their companions to arrive before they explored the cave. When other people saw Walter and Momin leading their groups inside the cave, their eyes flashed and suddenly a thought came into their minds if they enter the cave before us. Wouldn't they take away all the good things? When this thought crossed their minds, they thought about stopping Momin and Walter, but this thought immediately disappeared when they looked at Walter and Momin's group. Not even considering the fact that both of them were at the peak of rank 2, even the other giants and elves in their group were not normal, so they knew that if they tried to stop them, the only thing awaiting them was a certain death. The people who were waiting for their companions to arrive sighed as they watched Momin and Walter stop in front of the cave entrance. If something unexpected happens inside, remember to prioritize your own safety. First Momin sent a telepathic message to the other two giants who nodded their heads in understanding. Similar to Momin, Walter also instructed the elves to prioritize their own safety, and from the expressions of the elves, anyone could tell that they would have done it even if Walter had not instructed them. Life was precious, and they didn't want to lose it for no reason. After instructing their companions, Walter and Momin looked at each other and nodded their heads. After nodding their heads, both of them took the lead and entered the cave at the same time. The other elves and the two giants followed behind them, and all of them disappeared inside the cave. I hope they die without being able to take away anything from the cave, a 100 centimeter tall dwarf said in a low voice, as he clicked his tongue in annoyance, seeing them enter the cave. The other people who heard the dwarf shared the same sentiments as they were also thinking the same, just as they were praying for Walter and Momin's group's doom. Boom. Someone landed in front of the cave entrance with a booming sound, raising a dust cloud. What the fu asterisk case and people who were standing close to the cave entrance were caught inside the dust cloud, and showed an annoyed expression. Whoosh. They used their powers, and the dust cloud was easily blown away by them. Once the dust cloud disappeared, they saw a grey head, lazy dash. Looking man with two jet black wings on his back standing in front of the cave. Chapter 820 Clang, clang, dash. The sound of metal clashing against metal rang out in the vast outer space, as the stars and galaxies illuminated the surroundings in myriad colors. BRZZZ. A sword, nearly one and a half meters long buzzed as it released powerful sword energies in all directions, disintegrating all the asteroids or dead planets. That came into contact with the power that it was releasing. UFU asterisk king monster just what kind of abomination weapon is that? A girl, who looked around 13 or 14 years old, said in a hateful voice, as she slashed ahead of her using the long silver sword, that was slightly larger than her petty body. As the girl slashed with her sword, a storm of icy sword energy that froze thousands of kilometers of outer space rushed ahead, turning everything that came in its path into icy dust. As the icy sword energy rushed forward, a man with sharp elf-like ears, heterochromia eyes, one golden and one black, and deep black hair looked at it without any change in his expression. The man was holding a weapon in his hand, but the weapon was covered in a deep black aura, so no one could see its true form. 
Just when the icy sword energy was about to hit the man, he pointed the weapon he was holding in front of him and slashed lightly. Boom. The moment the man slashed, the space in front of him shattered, and everything, including the icy sword energy, disappeared from the face of the world. The thousands of kilometers of the area that was frozen due to the icy sword energy turned into an empty void, and the girl who attacked using the sword flew backwards like a floating asteroid and crashed against a dead planet turning it into dust. Light blue blood flowed out of her injuries, and she felt her head spinning due to the impact. Sever. Before the girl could recover, she heard a cold voice, and the weapon that the man was holding pierced her stomach. Ugh. The girl screamed in pain and felt as if her entire existence was being ripped apart by the weapon. She looked at the golden and black eye of the man, and gritted her teeth in anger. Light blue energy started to cover her body, and a terrifying aura that shook the entire galaxy, started to come out of his body. You bastard. I will the girl tried to speak something, but before she could, the world around her started to crumble, and everything turned pitch black. Valerie was jolted awake and panted heavily. She looked around her, and after confirming that she was still in her bedroom, she sighed in relief and wiped the cold sweat from her forehead. That strange dream again. She muttered in a tired voice and slumped down on her bed while covering her face with her hands. After calming down, she opened her status window and looked at the notifications she had received recently after becoming an A-plus rank hunter. Your Ice Reaper physique is evolving into a Monarch's physique. The evolution of your physique failed due to the sever effect of question mark question mark question mark. Absorb the source of ice monarch to evolve your physique. Just what the hell is this monarch physique and ice monarch source? Valerie muttered in a tired voice as she looked at the notifications. The strange dreams she was having started after she reached A plus rank a few days ago, and these notifications appeared alongside them. She didn't know what had happened. But she could feel that something inside her had changed after reaching A plus rank. Even the power of her Ice Reaper physique had greatly increased, although it hadn't evolved to the next stage. Moreover, the rank of her core was increasing at a rapid speed. Previously, she had to stabilize her core for a few months after advancing to the next rank. But after reaching A rank, she only needed to stabilize it for a few days before it was ready to advance again. When Evan left for Utopia, she was at the peak of B plus rank. About a month after he left, she reached A rank, and surprisingly, just two more months later, her core advanced once again, making her an A plus rank hunter. As if that wasn't enough, she could sense that in just a few days, her core would return to normal, and she would be able to advance to S rank. What is going on here? Is this also an effect of the Ice Reaper physique? Valerie asked herself in a confused voice, not understanding what was happening. She pondered over all this for a long time, but could not come to any conclusion, due to her limited knowledge of the matter. Eventually, she sighed and sat up. Forget it. Since I don't have enough information, there is no point in dwelling on this matter. She said and glanced out of the window, instead of pondering over useless things. I might as well go into a dungeon and collect some cores, since I will need them to advance to S rank. While looking outside, Valerie suddenly thought about something and rubbed her chin. After advancing one more time, I will reach S rank and be able to use the Tower of Ascension. Maybe I will find a solution for my physique after using the tower. For some reason, the thought of using the tower put a smile on her face, as she wanted to use it for a long time so that she could go to the higher world as well. Speaking of the tower, I wonder if that bastard is still alive, she asked herself and got up from the bed. Well, considering his power and that unreasonably large undead army of his, there is no way he would have encountered any danger there, Valerie said, after standing up as she headed towards the bathroom. Mabe, I will meet him after using the tower. Chapter 821 Boom with a loud booming sound, Evan landed in front of the cave entrance that was flashing with different kinds of light, as if there was a disco party going on inside. Damn, I am late. They entered the cave before me Evan thought inwardly with an annoyed look on his face, as despite receiving the news from Team Black, that some people were going to enter the cave, he wasn't able to arrive here on time. Hum. Suddenly, Evan felt some piercing glances and looked behind him with a lazy expression on his face. His grey hair was in a complete mess because of rushing here, and due to his lazy looking face, he was giving off the vibe of a beggar. When Evan turned around and people, 
who were gathered around the cave saw his face, they were taken aback. Even though these people had seen many kinds of individuals during their lifetime, it was the first time they had seen such a lazy looking face. Looking at his face, all the people felt as if this guy just wanted to lie down and sleep for the rest of his life. Some people even started to yawn when they saw Evan's face, feeling like sleeping. But since all of them were talented core evolvers, they immediately shook off this strange feeling, and looked at Evan warily, thinking that he was using some kind of demonic technique to put them all to sleep. What surprised the people most was that the aura around Evan indicated that he was just a mid-level rank 1 core evolver. He landed in the midst of tens of evolvers who were higher ranked than him without showing any concern. Is this guy tired of life and wants us to send him to the afterlife? Some people who were caught inside the dust cloud that Evan created upon landing, thought with a strange look on their faces upon noticing his rank. Stop looking at me you lowlifes, Evan said in an arrogant voice when he saw people were looking at him with strange expressions. Hearing Evan's arrogant voice and the way he called them, the eyes of the people became even more strange, and they felt as if they were looking at an idiot. This guy is just a mid-level rank 1 noob. How dare he talk to us like this? Does he have a death wish? All the people who heard Evan's arrogant voice thought at the same time. You guys are very lucky that my brother and sister are not here. If they were here and saw how you guys are looking at me, they would have gouged out your eyes, Evan said in a voice full of disdain, emphasizing the words brother and sister. Brother and sister people were stunned when they heard Evan's words and started to wonder who his brothers and sisters were who gave him so much confidence to behave like a spoiled young master in front of them. Who are your brother and sister? The dwarf who had prayed for Momen and Walter's group's doom asked in a serious voice as he didn't want to get into conflict with powerful people for no reason. Hearing the dwarf, Evan looked at him with eyes full of arrogance and said in a deep voice, how stupid, shorty. Are you living in a cave or something that you don't even know who my brother and sister are? Black veins started to pop out on the dwarf's forehead when he heard Evan calling him shorty. But he didn't say anything and continued to listen. Considering that you look somewhat like my pet hamster, I will give you the honor of hearing the names of my brother and sister from my mouth, Evan said, and took a deep breath. All the people who heard Evan looked at him with anticipation and curiosity wondering who the brother and sister of this lazy looking rude bastard were. Evan didn't immediately speak about his brother and sister, instead, he looked at the people for a few seconds, heightening their excitement. For some reason, a few people who were not from powerful factions like orcs and a few others swallowed their saliva, when they saw the way Evan was looking at everyone. After a few seconds, Evan finally opened his mouth. My brother and sister are, roll, screech. Just when Evan was about to speak, a loud dragon roar and phoenix cry rang out throughout the surroundings from the distance, and people saw a giant purple dragon and firebird coming towards them. Here they are, here they are, my brother and sister are finally here. Ha 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 ha. Suddenly, Evan started to laugh like a madman, and pointed towards the giant dragon and the firebird who were coming towards them. People were shocked when they heard Evan as all of them immediately recognized Voitska and Blaze who were approaching. TSK, these two bastards. Even though I had sent my shadow undead to guide them to my location, they sure took their sweet time to come. Here Evan said inwardly, as he looked at a sheep running in front of Voitska and Blaze. At the back of the sheep, a white flag was attached with a few words written on it. If you want to meet the dead man, come with me. You guys are doomed now. When I informed my brother and sister about this cave, they told me to stop anyone from entering the cave. Now that they are here, all of you can forget about entering the cave, Evan said in a loud voice, looking at everyone with an arrogant smile on his face. What? People were stunned when they heard Evan and looked at him with shocked faces. Are you kidding us? The dwarf who spoke earlier asked with his mouth wide open. Although Blaze and Voidska were powerful, everyone knew that it was impossible for them to monopolize the cave, as there were many other peak rank 2 individuals in the tomb, and Voidska and Blaze couldn't face all of them. If they tried to stop the people gathered outside of the cave from entering, it was obvious that the peak rank 2 evolvers behind them wouldn't sit idly by. You, Shorty Evans suddenly disappeared from the place he was standing and, boom, the dwarf who questioned him was sent flying backwards like a broken kite. He coughed out blood in mid-air and crashed hundreds of meters away. How dare you question the decision of my brother and sister? Evan said in a cold voice as he looked at the peak rank 1 dwarf, 
who had passed out due to his kick. People were stunned when they saw Evan knocking out a peak rank 1 core revolver with just a single kick and looked at him with blank expressions on their faces. Dead man. Suddenly, they heard Voitska's loud voice and snapped back to their senses. Evan looked at Voitska, who had finally noticed him and was flying toward him at rapid speed. Big brother, I know you're excited to see me, but you don't have to shout my name like this, Evan said in a loud voice when he heard Voitska's voice and looked at the people who were still wondering just what the fu asterisk k was going on. Looking at the confused looks of people, his lips arched upwards in a dangerous smile. I really want to see what kind of face my big brother and sister will make at the end of the show, Evan thought inwardly as his shadow started to shake. Chapter 822 I wonder what kind of face my brother and sister will make at the end of the show, Evan said to himself as his shadow started to shake. Whoosh. Suddenly, 10 beginner level rank 2 shadow undeads emerged from his shadow storage and spread in the surroundings. What the people were shocked when 10 beginner level rank 2 monsters suddenly appeared out of nowhere and started to surround them. Because of what Evan said earlier about Blaze and Voidska, and how easily he knocked out the dwarf with just a single attack despite the difference in their ranks, the minds of people were already in chaos. So when the shadow undeads emerged from the shadow storage and surrounded them, they were not able to react in time. How dare you people try to rebel against my brother and sister? Since you don't want to listen to their order, all of you can die, Evan said in an angry voice, and Brown and the other shadow undeads suddenly attacked the people who gathered outside of the cave. There were nearly 100 people gathered outside of the cave, and there was no shortage of beginner and mid-level rank 2 core revolvers. However, when the shadow undeads suddenly attacked, they specifically targeted the small groups of people, with no rank 2 core revolvers to cause chaos. Ugh. The group of people who were attacked by shadow undeads, screamed in pain and horror as they were unable to stop the attacks. When the other rank 2 core revolvers saw this, they immediately ordered their group to run away from there. Instead of attacking Evan and shadow undeads, why they decided to run away. With their numbers, it wasn't difficult for them to take care of 10 shadow undeads and Evan, so why did they decide to run away? The answer to this question was very simple. I am going to kill you. All of them looked behind them hearing the angry roar and their body shook in fear. They were afraid of Voidska and Blaze, who were rapidly approaching them with crazed looks on their faces. Just by feeling the terrifying aura that they were emitting due to their anger towards Evan, people felt a chill run down their spine. In their eyes, Blaze and Voidska were not angry at Evan, they were angry at them and were coming to kill them. Although there were many people and they could put up a fight against Blaze and Voidska if they all worked together, they knew it wasn't a good idea. Voidska and Blaze were quite powerful, and even if they somehow managed to defeat them, they were sure that many people would die in the process, and no one wanted to die a meaningless death. When people started to run away, Evan showed a cunning smile, and began to chase after them along with his shadow undeads. Stop, you lowlife. How dare you run away? Evan shouted in a loud voice as he chased after the fleeing people. In order to avoid alerting Blaze and Voitska about the exact situation, he even used wind manipulation skill to ensure that his voice and the voices of people who were running away wouldn't reach them. This way, they wouldn't be able to understand what was happening. When Blaze and Voitska saw Evan running away with other people, they thought he was trying to run away from them, and both of them released their aura to full force, trying to stop him. Stop running, you bastard Voitska roared in anger as he chased after Evan. When the people who were trying to run away looked back and saw this scene, they thought Voitska and Blaze were chasing after them along with Evan, and their faces turned pale. Damn it, those two bastards have gone crazy. They really want to kill us to monopolize that cave, a beginner level rank 2 demon said in a hate-filled voice, as he sent a message about what Voitska and Blaze were doing to other demons. Similar to the demon, other people also sent the message, and hoped that their companions would soon come over and save them. Ha 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 ha, run bitches, run. Even if you run to the end of the world, my brother and sister will still chase after you, and give you all a painful death for making me angry. Evan laughed like a madman, when he saw the panicked faces of the people, and continued to run after them. 
What the fuck are you talking about? When did we make you angry? We were just standing there, and you were the one who suddenly attacked us. A peak rank 1 dwarf screamed in a crying voice as he ran while carrying the unconscious dwarf who passed out earlier because of Evan's kick. You bit asterisk Hess didn't kneel down and worship me when I appeared in front of you. And you are still asking why I am angry, Evan shouted in a hateful voice, as if the people running away in front of him had killed his entire family. Since you didn't kneel down and worship me when I came in front of you, there is no reason for you guys to stay alive anymore. Is this fu asterisk her out of his mind? His words are not making any sense. This was the only thought that came into people's minds when they heard Evan, and they almost passed out due to anger. Stop, you m-o-t-h-e-r asterisk arca. You can't run away from me, Voidska shouted and closed the distance between him and Evan at rapid speed. You lowlifes, my brother is asking for you to stop. Why are you still running? Stop and calmly accept your death, Evan completely twisted what Voidska was shouting, scaring the sh asterisk t out of the people. After a few seconds, Evan noticed Voidska and Blaze were about to catch him, and if he delayed any longer, they would be able to use the power of their zone to stop him. Well, it should be enough he thought inwardly and suddenly changed his running direction. Big brother, big sister, let them run away for now. They already informed other people about the cave, so I am sure they will come back here with their companions. Let's wait for them to come back with other people, and we will wipe all of them out in a single motion, Evan shouted as he changed his running direction. Of course, what he shouted was only heard by the people who were running ahead of him, and Voitska and Blaze were not able to hear anything due to the wind manipulation skill. When people heard what Evan said, they were stunned, but when they saw Blaze and Voitska stop chasing them and follow after Evan, all of them sighed in relief. They want to wipe out all of us. Huh, a demon spoke in a hateful tone as he continued to run away. Let's see if you guys can act so smugly next time we meet. Other people who were running away thought the same as the demon, and their heart was also filled with hatred towards Evan, Blaze, and Voidska. If Blaze and Voidska knew what kind of mess Evan had put them into, they would have surely coughed out blood due to anger. Let's get out of here now, Evan said to himself after a few seconds when he noticed Blaze and Voidska were following him, and the other people had run far away. He stopped running and flashed a bright smile towards Blaze and Voidska who were rushing towards him. Hey brother and sister, thanks for that essence evolution drop. I will be going now since I have to feed my pet hamster, he shouted in a mocking voice. When Blaze and Voidska heard Evan, a look of anger flashed on their faces as they thought about how Evan had escaped with the essence evolution drop under their noses. They wanted nothing more than to tear him apart, but were taken aback when they saw Evan's body glowing in silver light and the next second. Whoosh. He disappeared from there. Blaze and Voidska were stunned when Evan suddenly disappeared, and they used their spiritual senses to look for him. But to their shock, they couldn't find him even though their spiritual senses could easily cover an area of around 20,000 kilometers. When Blaze and Voidska realized Evan escaped, their faces turned extremely ugly. Dead man Voidska roared in anger as the surrounding area around him shook. Blaze was also extremely angry when she wasn't able to find Evan, as she thought they would be able to retrieve the essence evolution drop from him, and Voidska would give her a void crystal after leaving the tomb. Damn, that sly bastard Blaze cursed in a low voice, and once again tried to look for Evan with an irritated look on her face. When the black sheep, the shadow undead of the wind and lightning sheep, came in front of her with the flag attached to its back, she already guessed that it was some kind of trap. Or maybe just a sick joke. Voidska also understood this thing, but both of them didn't care and followed the sheep. The reason? It was quite simple actually. The sheep was leading them to the second layer, and since both of them were also planning to head towards the second layer, they followed the sheep without saying anything. As for the trap, it was even more irrelevant to them. Since both of them had enough confidence in their strength, they were confident that no matter what kind of trap Evan had prepared for them, they would be able to deal with him using their strength. That bastard was just messing around with us, Voidska remarked after a moment of fruitless searching for Evan. Blaze didn't say anything in response to Voidska's comment, but her expression clearly showed her annoyance with the situation. While Blaze and Voidska were cursing, far away from them, a silver light flashed, and Evan appeared there. He looked at the ground and picked up a small object. 
mid-level rank 1 soul beacon can be used to teleport to a distance of 25,000 kilometers. It's good that I successfully created this. Otherwise, it would have been quite difficult for me to escape from them, Evan said in a low voice and his lips arched upwards. He looked in the direction where Blaze and Voidska were, and thinking about the mess that he just created, he barely held back his laughter. Now that I have planted the seed of chaos, he suddenly said and summoned the wind and lightning sheep. Let's enter that cave before anything else happens. He sat down at the back of the sheep, and it immediately bolted in the direction of the cave. Chapter 823 Riding the wind and lightning sheep, Evan once again reached the cave that was releasing the strange aura. Dismounting from the sheep, he looked around and saw that because of the mess he had created earlier, there was no one around the cave. Even by using his spiritual senses that could cover thousands of kilometers of area, he did not find anyone around that area. Well, although there is no one here for now, I am sure people will soon come back here, Evan muttered in a low voice, and looked in the direction he had led Blaze and Voitska. Earlier, Voitska and Blaze were busy chasing him so they didn't pay attention to the cave. But now that they had lost his track, Evan was sure that they would come back to check out the cave because of its strange aura that covered an area of more than 100,000 kilometers. I should go inside before they come here, Evan said to himself as he looked at the entrance of the cave. Feeling the strange aura emanating from the cave, he narrowed his eyes and took a step forward, entering the cave. The moment Evan stepped inside the cave, the surroundings around him wrapped and twisted and his head started to spin. Evan used his spiritual power to keep himself calm, and immediately understood what was happening. A teleportation formation he said inwardly, stunned that the entrance of the cave was actually a teleportation formation. In just a few seconds, the surroundings around him returned to normal, and Evan felt his feet touch the ground. F-U asterisk K. He cursed in a low voice once the teleportation ended, and felt like throwing up. His head was spinning at high speed as it was the most unstable teleportation he had ever experienced. But he knew that he was in a completely new environment, and there might be danger lurking around him, so he tried to regain his senses as soon as possible, and release Brown and a few other shadow undeads around him. After a few seconds, he finally regained his senses and looked around him. What the upon looking around, Evan realized he was in a small room, and there was a stone platform in front of him. More importantly, he saw around ten white plates placed on the platform. Am I in some kind of ancient dining room? Evan thought aloud when he saw the dining plates on the stone platform. The room was around 100 square meters in size, and other than the stone platform, there was nothing inside it. No window, no door, no opening, nothing. It was just a closed room surrounded by stone walls. Well, that's unexpected, Evan said when he did not see anything inside the room, and walked towards the stone platform. When he reached in front of the platform, he noticed there was no food inside the plates, instead, there was an herb inside each plate. Seeing the herbs inside the plates, Evan raised an eyebrow, not understanding what was going on. He tried to pick one of the herbs from the platform, but the moment he tried to pick the herb, a barrier covered the herb, and at the same time, a formation lit up under his feet, covering the entire room. Evan immediately jumped away from the platform when he saw the formation, but since the formation was covering the entire room, there was no place for him to escape. He thought about using shadow wings to fly up but realized the formation was releasing energy waves. So even if he flew up, he wouldn't be able to escape from the formation. Just when Evan was thinking about breaking the wall of the room to escape, an ancient voice resounded inside his head. Identify the names of all the herbs placed on the platform to move to the next round. Who the F-U asterisk K Evan was startled when he suddenly heard the voice inside his head and jumped up in fright. But when he deduced the words that he heard inside his head, a strange expression appeared on his face. Identify the names of the herbs, Evan muttered in a low voice, looking at the herbs that were on the stone platform. He rubbed his chin for a moment, and suddenly something clicked in his mind. Don't tell me this cave is something like a place where you can receive an inheritance or legacy. He said in a weird voice, thinking about the novels that he had read. He looked back at the herbs that were on the platform, and remembering the words that he heard inside his head, he reached an immediate conclusion. This might be an inheritance of an alchemist, 
And this conclusion left him quite dissatisfied. Honestly, he wasn't interested in obtaining the inheritance of an alchemist. Although he knew it would be quite helpful to him, he really wasn't interested in becoming an alchemist. When he entered the cave, he was hoping to find something more useful, like the dead body of a rank 5 or rank 6 core revolver. Although questionable, he felt that dead bodies would be more useful to him in the future instead of learning alchemy. Huh. Evan sighed out loud and walked towards the stone platform with slow steps. Since I am not interested in this sh asterisk t, I will just let Amara take care of it. He said and stopped in front of the platform. As Evan stopped in front of the platform, something important clicked in his mind. Wait a second he said with narrowed eyes and thought about the aura that was coming out of the cave. If this is something like alchemy inheritance, then what was the strange aura that the cave was releasing? And more importantly, what were those disco lights? Evan didn't know why, but for some reason a strange feeling started to grow in his heart. When he thought about the strange aura he felt before entering the cave. That aura covered an area of more than 100,000 kilometers. So it was obvious that it was definitely something extraordinary. Maybe, just maybe there might really be something more important inside this cave than the inheritance I am thinking about. Evan said in a low voice. And his lips arched upwards as he looked at the herbs in front of him. Chapter 824 Thinking about the strange aura that the cave was releasing, Evan decided to complete the trial that he received. He stopped in front of the stone platform and tried to pick up a purple-colored herb from the plate. Unlike last time, no barrier appeared around the herb when he tried to pick it, and he easily picked up the herb. After picking up the herb, Evan tried to look for its information through the status window. But just as he expected, for some reason, he couldn't see the herb's information. He looked at the formation that was glowing beneath his feet and finally understood the purpose of the formation. And here I thought it was some kind of attack formation or something Evan muttered in a low voice and used shadow senses. What is the name of this herb, Amara? Since he couldn't see the name of the herb using the status window, he decided to ask Amara. In the closed world of Drades, Amara had read many books related to alchemy and her knowledge about herbs was far superior to his. When Amara heard Evan's voice and saw the violet-colored herb in his hand, she immediately replied, It's a wivernlet. It's a herb that needs to be watered with wyvern blood if you want to grow it. Evan heard Amara's voice inside his head, and his eyes gleamed a little when he heard the herb needed to be watered using the wyvern blood. This herb seems to be quite valuable, he thought to himself, but soon shook his head as it wasn't the time for it. Now that I know the name of the herb, what should I do next? He asked himself once Amara told him the name of the herb and looked around him. Seeing there was nothing around him, he thought for a second and after a moment, said out the name of the herb. It's a wivernwood. The moment Evan spoke the name of the purple herb, the herb glowed and disappeared from his hand. Evan raised an eyebrow when the herb disappeared from his hand, but he did not care about it, and picked up a yellow flower from the second plate. Amara, just like before, he asked Amara for help without any sense of shame. It's a sandstorm leaf. Hearing Amara, Evan once spoke the name of the flower, and it disappeared just like Wivernwood. There were a total of 10 herbs on the stone platform, and with Amara's help, he quickly identified the first 6 herbs without any problem. But when Evan picked up the 6th herb, which looked like a dry branch of a tree, he heard Amara's embarrassed voice. I don't know about this herb. Evan was taken aback when he heard that Amara didn't know what this herb was and didn't know what to do. His knowledge of herbs was close to none, so it was obvious that it was impossible for him to answer the question. In the end, he sighed and said in a light voice, Just give me the name of a herb that looks somewhat like this dried branch. Amara thought for a few seconds hearing Evan's question and said after a moment, It looks somewhat like sunfire blossom which is usually quite dry because of the fire energy inside it. Some fire blossom. Hearing Amara, Evan didn't think too much and named the dry branch. When he spoke the name of the branch, the branch disappeared from his hand just like the previous herbs. Evan was lost for words when he saw this as he couldn't determine whether he was right or not, but looking at the remaining three herbs, he first decided to take care of them. The remaining three herbs were all in Amara's knowledge. So he easily identified them. Once the last herb disappeared from his hand, the formation that was glowing beneath his feet shattered. 
The moment the formation disappeared, Evan once again heard the same voice inside his head that he had heard earlier. Calculating your result. Nine right, one wrong. So that was the wrong answer. Ha, huh? Evan muttered in a low voice when he heard that he answered one question wrong. Just when he was wondering whether he passed the trial or not, he once again heard the voice inside his head. Teleporting you to the second trial. Suddenly, another formation lit up under Evan's feet. Seeing the formation, Evan immediately called back all the shadow undeads that he had released inside the room. The moment all the shadow undeads entered his shadow storage. Whoosh. The formation glowed, and Evan disappeared from the stone room. Just like last time, Evan once again felt his head spinning, as the teleportation was very unstable. When the teleportation ended and his feet touched the ground, Evan shook his head and tried to regain his senses. After a few seconds, when he finally regained his senses, he once again heard the voice inside his head. Collect the following herbs to pass the second trial. A list suddenly materialized in front of Evan. As he had already regained his senses, he grabbed the list and saw there were names of five herbs on it. Be cautious while collecting the herbs or you might die. The voice once again spoke inside his head and Evan narrowed his eyes when he heard the warning. He looked around and noticed he was standing in front of a forest. Glancing behind him, he saw a desolate land devoid of life in stark contrast to the green, vibrant forest ahead of him. Well, it's obvious where I have to go to collect the herbs, Evan said in a dry voice. When he saw the desolate land behind him, and looked back at the forest. The trees in the forest were shorter than those in the dark forest, but still large enough to block most sunlight from reaching the ground. Hey Amara, what do you think? Evan decided to seek expert advice before entering the forest. So he told Amara about the list of the herbs he received. However, before Amara could respond, boom. Evan heard a loud booming sound from deep within the forest accompanied by energy waves spreading in all directions. There is someone fighting inside the forest, Evan muttered in a low voice and narrowed his eyes. Don't tell me the people who entered the cave before me are also here. Chapter 825 Damn, this annoying bastard Walter cursed in a low voice as he maneuvered through the sky, dodging an energy ball made of deep black energy. The black energy ball passed through his location and continued ascending high into the sky. After a few seconds, a loud explosion resounded throughout the sky. As the energy ball exploded at a certain height, the shockwaves blew away all the clouds and turned the sky dark because of the black energy released by the explosion. Walter protected himself from the shockwaves and continued to move through the sky like an eagle. Suddenly, the storage ring he was wearing flashed, and a blood-colored longbow appeared in his hands. He knocked an arrow inside the bow, and the arrow started to burn with deep golden flames. Still moving high in the sky, Walter looked at the two-headed hellhound chasing him from the ground, and his eyes flashed with a calculated look. For a second, he glanced behind the hellhound, and after calculating everything, he nodded his head. It should be enough suddenly, Walter stopped and looked at the hellhound chasing him with a neutral expression. When the hellhound saw Walter stop flying away, it showed a confused look, but soon, it thought about something and looked behind it. The hellhound was not an idiotic monster, so it immediately understood why Walter stopped flying. After understanding Walter's intention, the hellhound quickly turned around and started to run back. When Walter saw the hellhound was trying to run away, he just sneered and aimed the bow he had taken out earlier at it. The arrow inside the bow, blazing with golden fire, flashed brightly. And without hesitation, he shot the arrow toward the hellhound. Golden Infernal Storm Walter said the moment the arrow left the quiver, and the hellhound felt the temperature of the surroundings suddenly increase. At the same time, it noticed the trees and grass around it taking on a golden hue making the forest around it seem as if it were a forest of gold. The hellhound felt a sense of doom like never before, when the surroundings around it turned golden, prompting it to look above to see what was happening and, the moment the hellhound looked high in the sky, a bark filled with terror escaped its mouth, and its two heads showed terrified expressions. At some point, the arrow water shot turned into a tsunami of golden flames, and covered the whole sky. As far as the eyes of the hellhound could see, all it saw was a veil of golden flames covering the sky. Using the agility of a peak rank 2 monster, the hellhound tried to escape, but in front of golden flames that covered the entire sky. It was completely useless, and soon the hellhound was engulfed by a tsunami of flames. 
The hellhound screamed in pain as its body started to burn into golden flames. It tried to stop the flames using its power. But the golden flame burning its body was quite strange, as all the power that the hellhound used to extinguish the flame was devoured by it. It was as if the flame was a beast that could devour anything. The golden flames continued to spread outwards in all directions, and in just a few seconds, covered hundreds of kilometers of area, turning the forest into a sea of golden flames. The terrified scream of the hellhound lasted for a few minutes before everything turned silent and the only sound that could be heard was the sound of wood burning. What a troublesome enemy Walter muttered in a low voice, once the presence of the hellhound disappeared and snapped his fingers. The moment Walter snapped his fingers, the sea of golden flames disappeared, leaving behind a burnt forest with scorched black ground. After taking care of the fire, he looked in the direction the hellhound was fleeing, and a small smile appeared on his face. Now that the guardian is gone, I can collect the second herb mentioned in the list, Walter muttered and flew away from there. The name of the herb Walter needed to collect was called the Nether Orchid. It was a plant that needed the evil energy of the Hellhound in order to mature, and because of the energy of the Hellhound, the plant has a deep connection with the monster. If the Hellhound encounters a dangerous situation, it can use the connection it has with the Nether Orchid to get a temporary boost in power, but by doing that, it would practically destroy the entire plant. Walter needed to collect this plant, while making sure that the Hellhound wouldn't destroy it. So for the past few hours, he used weak attacks to taunt the Hellhound, and forced it to chase after him. In order to use the power of the Nether Orchid, the Hellhound needs to be within 1000 kilometers of it. By taunting the Hellhound and hiding his true powers, Walter led it out of the range of the Nether Orchid, and once he was sure that the Hellhound could not use its power, he burned it to death using his unique skill and the low level rank 3 bow. Now, I just need to collect 3 more herbs, Walter muttered with a mad look on his face, and clenched his fist. No matter what, that thing will be mine in the end. Soon, Walter arrived at the place where the nether orchid was growing, but when he reached there and saw the scene in front of him, his eyes opened wide in shock, but the shock was soon replaced by deep anger. Stop, you bastard, don't you dare touch that thing. Walter shouted in a voice filled with anger and shot towards a grey-haired, lazy-looking man who was holding a small purple dash, colored plant in his hand. Hearing Walter's anger-filled scream, the grey-haired man did not show any expression and dropped the nether orchid plant to the ground. This is the end of this video. Thank you guys for listening. Hope you enjoyed and wish you wonderful rest of the day. The silent rupt is out.